ladies and gentlemen, how you fucking doing? Welcome to another episode of The Flank. I'm joined by my friend, my dude, my companion. You know, already know the fucking vibe. Uh, ben Jane the Ben, how you doing? You were just talking about your espresso machine. Yeah, I mean, I'm doing good, Tom. You know, I uh, got a nice <laughs> workout in this morning. I'm starting a new workout routine, trying to get more strength in the golf swing. Yeah! So that's good. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Asim, for the ad you know, We have work, Asim in work, here, by the way. Work was a grind today as it is all days, but we're doing cool shit and we're doing cool stuff, so it's always exciting. And listen, I was excited. You and I hadn't done the show in a couple days. We had matches back today, so I've been looking forward to talking on the show today, Tom. All yeah, day. man. It, another good day, Cotton. It's only day one, man. It's only day one. Yeah, is yeah. that why you're going to the gym? Because you want to get your golf swing up? Is that, that like the main well, thing? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to lose a little bit of weight. I'll be honest. I gained some weight over the, the pandemic. Oh, okay. uh, but I'm trying to get I'm trying to get a little bit more power in my swing now. Uh-huh. I'm like starting to do some swing corrects, trying to get a little bit more distance, try to see if I can uh, move my clubs up one gap. See, if possible. I'm confused with this whole golfing thing. Everybody's yeah. golfing these days. Everybody's yeah, fun. No, but I'm saying wave. I'm saying every gamer has transformed themselves into being a golfer. Yeah, it's a good out. It's because it's a listen, you go outdoor with the boys and the uh-huh. gals, you drink some bevs. You oh, it sounds balls. like a great time. You, you appreciate the outdoors. It's a great sport for people that, you know, don't want to go out and get all sweaty. Oh, you don't sweat when you golf? I feel like it, I feel like golfing is hard. Um, depends only, on the day. Depends on the day, Tom. Yeah, but if depends it's on the day. If it's hot out, you're going to sweat. That's yeah. that's life. Yeah, that is life, Tom. Thank you very much for, <laughs> for letting me know that. If it's hot <laughs> outside, guys, you're probably going to sweat. You know what I'm saying? Hey, guys, I, I know that uh, normally we have the, the names of people speaking, but for some reason the plug-in is not working, and it's just not working on the stream. So just to let you guys know, we got Asim in the call, we got Tom Gravity in the call, and then you already know Ben J. Nassim. Um, so we're going to have them join us today. Yeah, hey <laughs> and every guys, time you hear on? any uh, uh, sound cloud thingy or whatever the hell, what do you even call those things, Me. Asim? Soundboard. Soundboards. It's the soundboards. Whenever you hear a soundboard, yeah. it's most likely Asim going rogue. All right? But, uh, hey. We already kicked things off today. Uh, first match of the day, we had Paris Legion going up against Atlanta Phase. We had Florida Mutineers going up against Toronto, and that was another good one. But we're going to start with the first match to kick things off. And, Ben, I'll let you take it from here because, you know, master veto system guy, you know, we got to get we gotta let yeah. Ben take care of the vetoes. You know what I'm saying? Love, love that as you go ahead and fix my box on stream because it's a little bit crooked. It's a little fucked um, up. Yeah, I mean, so listen, this series <laughs> and, and the second series – uh, we saw Sanef get in the mix, and it makes sense for both these teams look like Checkmate has come out. If you're FaZe, for example, Checkmate was one of your bread and butters last stage. They didn't play a lot of Miami. Again, they banned it in this series, so they got to get better uh, or get good at standoff um, so they don't have to play Miami because then you got a full set of maps. But otherwise, this Vita went pretty well as expected. Paris usually gets Garrison for point game one because it's a map they're really good at, uh, and then the rest of the maps are kind of favored to FaZe, and that's basically kind of how the series went, Tom. I don't know what your thoughts were overall. I thought Paris definitely looked like serviceable in this game and played well. Mm-hmm. Um, I think ultimately the skill of FaZe shined through. And, and you know, I don't think both teams are going to be super... Uh, how do I phrase this? I, I think there's positives and negatives to take away from both teams. Mm-hmm. I don't think Paris are really close to being favored in this series. I don't think FaZe going to be happy with how they played. But if you're FaZe, you got the W. And if Paris, you looked... Pretty decent against one of the top teams, and you were a couple plays away from the series kind of going the other way. Yeah, especially this first map. It went all the way down to the wire, but Paris, they, they looked like they got a little bit more pep in their step. I don't know if it's just the, the honeymoon stage. Maybe just Zap was just a, a you know, kind of just fresh air to these guys. Um, for those of you who don't know, Paris Legion recently just picked up Zapdius uh, in place of Classic. Classic ended up making the switch over to Seattle. So they are playing with a new guy, and it just seemed like their pacing was a little bit better, Ben. Is that is that just me? I just felt like they were moving around the map like pretty well together, pretty quick, pretty fast. It seemed like their their decision making was really good. Um, it was exciting to watch at first. I was like, oh no, you know, like Phase are coming out, they're they're smoking them. They get the first two hills, but they definitely picked up the pace as as the series went on. Um, and I definitely saw a little bit more potential in this squad. Um, they obviously didn't execute today. And they need to start executing because, it, like we constantly keep saying, I feel like we're repeating ourselves, but they're just running out of time. So it's like at this point, um, you wouldn't want to see them getting some results, but it wasn't an easy matchup for them today, Ben. Yeah, I think a couple of things. One is I think Temp had probably one of his better series in the last he played say, great. Like five to six weeks, which yeah, really kind of helped them. And look, like if you're Paris, like I wouldn't lose too much sleep over this series. This was probably going to be their hardest opponent in that group. But if they play this way, against some of the other teams in the group, especially the teams like 
Minnesota and Chicago, like they're going to have good chances in those series. And all you got to do in this group, if they're competitive is go three and two and you might make winner's bracket. And that's what Paris needs. They need a nice, easy, like basically gift the top eight, top six to go ahead and start getting in the mix and these points going to land. Yeah. I mean, the points are very close. I mean, we've yeah. taken, we take a look at the standings. I mean, guys, that eighth spot is up for grabs. I, even, even the seventh, like Minnesota's in what seventh, right? I mean, even that seventh, eighth spot, like, we still have COD to play, man. We still have COD to play, and anybody can grab those spots. So, you know, a lot of these teams are going to come out with the fire. And that was one thing I said going into this series. I feel like Paris has a lot to play for, where FaZe, they're just like, you know. I felt like they looked a little off today, to be honest. I felt like FaZe looked off, uh, at least for their potential. But let's go into an actual game listening with FaZe to see how they sound. Go, go, go. Yeah, I spawned green again. I spawned green again. I spawned green again. Let me know if you can help green, okay? I got it. 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 Yo, I mean, two games, tell me, help me. I need a three. Three, there is three. Yeah, three again, three again. Three again, one light. That piece, that piece. One could jump out. Julian, back light. Crash, 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 crash. Damn, I'm back light. I'm back light. I'm back light. I'm back Yeah, nothing on. Yeah, he's not being in. I'm on top of this fuck. I don't see him, man. Got him on top. I'm looking at light. One square. I have green. I have on the green. Well, Atlanta Faze have come out of the gates here to start. That, yeah, was a, I mean, that was a short listening today. Short listening. Uh, I, 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 sk I skipped him out there. That's why. Oh, okay. I was going to yeah. say it was pretty short. But, um, it, I mean, it sounded like normal phase, right? A lot of energy. Super cracked. They talk really fucking fast. They say everything 20 fucking times. But that's just <laughs> how they get shit done. You know what I'm saying? Hey, some, it's just kind of yeah. the way they, they talk. Um, but how do you think they sound? But I thought they sounded pretty good. What do you think was the main problem with, with FaZe today? I was talking to them a little bit. I was talking to Simp. He said, you know, they felt like, you know, first match of the week, they felt a little bit out of it to kick things off. Just maybe not in the right headspace. Maybe mentally they just need to get right back into the swing of things. But um, anything that really caught your eye? Uh, I think from the FaZe side, they actually play like the P1s and P2s really good. And this is just really close, uh, really close because the other three hills went the way of Paris. You know, like on this map, uh, and Paris has been pretty good this map, regardless of team comp. Like, if those ARs get set up in the power spots, especially on P3 and P4, like, you can run up a lot of time and, and get streaks and make an impact. This map kind of came down. We're going to kind of watch through the end of this. This this map ultimately came down to the last two hills. Mm -hmm. Paris basically, actually, let me skip to the rest of this P5. And this is, like, one of the weirdest P1s I've ever watched. I don't know if you guys, like, remember how the situation went down. But, like, watch how this stalemates very significantly and it's like credit to phase they play this patiently because they had the, the p2 side right like you don't want to push the issue and get flipped mm -hmm. but just like not a lot of plays from paris to go ahead and make the move here i think this has always been sort of an issue with this team they don't have a, a lot of a go button players and sort of they sort of didn't push the issue in this team to try and flip the spawns and then ultimately they able to kind of work this out uh, and then as we go to the P2, your watch team's going to go off. And yeah, what Scraps did is what, what you're supposed to do 30 seconds before what, like... Yeah. It took him too long. Yeah, it just took him too long to mm -hmm. realize that, hey, we should just slide on the guy hill. I mean, he's running. He's, he's also running by people. I mean, yeah, just, no. just way too slow. I mean, yeah. I don't mind Donnie holding that preem because he's just kind of looking over, but somebody yeah, needs to go. He's a plat player, yeah. Yeah, like, Donnie's plat. He's going to preem. He's going to hold your L. He's going to look over you. Somebody needs to get that guy off a hill. Um, you also had a guy in Jens. They just took too long to to push out that guy. And FaZe, they're in the, they have the upper hand. FaZe is like, we'll sit here all day. Uh, we even, we have spawns. Even here, Paris took too long again. They're in a 3v1 in the hill, and then they just waited for the reinforcement to come back into bricks, and then they get blundered. If yep. they just went five seconds before when they went, they would have 3v1 tip. Yep, definitely too. So you also have Temp in the chat from the Paris Legion, and he agrees. You know, the same thing. It's just maybe their decision-making, or I don't really know kind of what went down with their comms and everything right there, but... You want to see them pick up the pace. When you get kills, you want to make use of those kills. Don't allow FaZe to come off spawn and get positioned again, right? You want to get those kills, and you want to uh, make those decisions super, super quickly. Um, and they just delayed their push, and they took too long. And and FaZe, I, I guess a team like FaZe, like, you got to make sure you're on point. You got to make sure you're on point because it's just not going to work. And, and it, Simp ends up popping a, a big three-piece at the end. Um, bro, Simp, Simp is looking like Simp, uh, I mean, he had, I guess people would say that last stage was probably one of his weakest and he still had incredible numbers yeah. and, uh, he came out today and he looked insane, um, as well as the rest of the roster. But then we go into a standoff hard, uh, S and D, uh, standoff S and D first time we're seeing the new map standoff in the, yeah. in the rotation. And, uh, guys, to me, this was a fresh, uh, just like a fresh air to me, man. Um, this was awesome to see, uh, just the nostalgia of it, right? Just I, the last time we saw this map was was in Black Ops 2. 
Um, so just to see it being played out now is uh, is incredible. Uh, I'm curious to see uh, Asim, and t- we also have Tom Gravity from uh, from Challengers, top player in Challengers, one of the best ARs in Challengers. Uh, I'm curious to see what you guys think about standoff S and D and kind of how it plays off in this game or plays out. Uh, so far, so good. I think um, it's still kind of one bomb sided. Like like a lot of you'll see a lot of teams love to plan A. Yeah. But but B is obviously nowhere near not impossible. You can still plan B, and I think Paris does a good job of planning it. I didn't uh-huh. get to watch much of the map, but um, yeah, no, it, it's a it's a it's a nice breath of fresh air. Uh, it's definitely better than Checkmate or Miami. So which whichever it took over, like was uh good. It was nothing but a good thing for the CDL. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. This... yeah I, I definitely think there's a lot of variety that you can add into this map too. Especially mm-hmm. with it being so, like, it's new now in, like, 2021, but, like, a lot of things you can pull out on this map. Yeah. It also plays a little bit faster than Black Ops 2, which is going to be interesting. Yeah, a lot faster, well, We saw sure. a lot of really good aggression in the other series when we were watching Standoff. I think this is definitely a welcome addition to map pool, uh, and I'm curious to see how teams kind of ad- adjust their tactics as we get farther in this stage towards the land. Yeah, there, you might see some differences, right, with the routes people are taking. The timings might be a little bit different just because the movement-based system is different in this game to Black Ops 2. So I think that was the main issue with it in Hardpoint. At least talking to most of the pro players, they just think it plays too fast because um, you just move around the map pretty fast. And because of that, the spawns are a little bit off, right? I, I heard there were some spawn complaints. We've talked about it before. But in s and I really like the way this map was played. But FaZe, they get blended this map. I think they lost like 6-1 or 6-2 or, or somewhere around there. They were getting smoked. Um, one thing I really like about this map is how aggressive you need to play on that A-bomb site on defense because yep. you can't just give a team the A-bomb site. Um, so it forces the defensive team to kind of push up and have to make a play on that A-bomb site. And I like it because it just makes things more mixy and, uh, you know, you get a lot of action in this map. So, Ben, just kind of talk to me. What do you think was like the – what do you think Paris did well here? Because I thought they played this map really, really well. I think they they look they looked like they were more prepared than FaZe coming at the standoff today. Yeah, it seemed like that way. And I, I thought Paris also had some good – uh, like team shells, like the way they worked off each other and made switch situations. Mm-hmm. Uh, it didn't seem like FaZe had done a lot of prep work. I know our cities talked about it post game series that they only had played it a couple of times. And we've talked to a lot of pro players like over the last few months, and they say like SD practice is really tricky because when you scrim SD against a pro team, like they're just going to like shell and not val- value their lives. And then when you play a real match, suddenly people are just like not taking wide challenges or they're, they're just trying to play like a little bit more turtle ish. So it's kind of hard to get that real match practice. Um, so I think on the face side, like, oh, well, kind of you lost 6-1, but you have some tape to go back and, and see, like, how an actual pro team played this in a real match. Um, that being said, like, they do need to get good at this map. As we highlighted in the beginning of the series, they've got to be good at this map or be good at Miami if they want to hold that really deep map pool they have in S&D. Mm-hmm. No, for sure. I think uh, preparation was key coming into this one just because it's the first time we're seeing it. And it was kind of like what we, what we said on the last show. I mean, we're getting to that final part of the year. Teams aren't going to have all year to get good at maps or get good at this map. So yeah. people are going to have to make sure that they're going back, watching film, and, and making sure that they really pick their shit up on this map. Because if, if p- teams have a bad map that they're already auto vetoing, adding another map into the rotation, they have to get good at this map. They have to. Or else it's going to hurt them in the veto process, and teams are going to take advantage of it. And we know how much that second uh, that second map can can be. It's a really big swing mode map. So um, I also want to give credit to Paris because I just think they played the map really well. I yep. liked how they, how they were really patient, and uh, they just did everything together. I mean, every time they pushed out of sight, they tried to do something together, except for right there when Zap went by himself. But for the most part, I felt like Paris was under control and, and knew what they were doing, and um, I feel like that comes to their preparation. Um, I don't really know who on this team is getting these guys together, but um, they looked like they were in full form today, Ben. Well, I think we can give credit to their uh, coach, who I believe it's his birthday today, Theory. Yep, is it? Happy is birthday. it? It's yep, Theory's it's birthday. Happy, birth- happy birthday, yeah. Theory, man. Oh, happy birthday to Theory, man. Co- uh, head coach of uh, Paris Legion. So let's make sure to give a happy oh, yeah. birthday to Theory. Go show him some love on Twitter, man. Yeah, to further your point, Tom, um, I think... Like, you've seen that kind of stretch where a new map comes in and it's a lot of teams' bread and butters and a lot of people won't respect that and they won't veto the map and it's, it, it costs them. And I think, like, like some, some examples would be, like, even with Apocalypse, like, last stage or even the stage before that. Uh, when you see a team get really hot on a certain map and if it just now comes into the rotation, you just have to respect that and, like, try to veto it instead of, like, trying to, trying to like, match up against them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so like yeah, Paris looks really strong in standoff. And if I were going to play Paris in a, in the next match, I would probably veto standoff S and D because it, they're looking really confident on it. They beat one of the best teams on it. So uh, that's where like a lot of teams need to understand that like 
Like, for example, Dallas last year with Gunrunner SMD. Like, teams needed to understand that that's probably their best map. And uh -huh. no matter what you do, they will win that map. So you just got to respect, respect it and veto it. Yeah, but I also do think it's early, too. Like, they look really good on it. But a team like FaZe, will, you know, give them a couple, a few more reps on it. Let them go back to the drawing board, try and figure it out. I mean, it's still still really early to just say, oh, yeah. you know, I was saying for so a team it, after you know? that, that plays... Like, because mm -mm. obviously, like, I would I agree that FaZe should definitely play stand up Ascendi against Paris because mm -hmm. no one knew how they looked on it. But yeah. I'm saying for Paris's next matchup, if I'm the if I'm Paris's opponent, I would most likely veto stand up just because I don't want them to feel confident on a map yeah. that they just did good on. No, 100%. 100%. Regardless, I think it's amazing that we have stand up back in the rotation. Yeah, unreal. I think it's really fun to watch. Um, I think it's really aesthetically pleasing. And just again, like I said about the nostalgia of it all, just from Black Ops 2. It's just really fun to, to watch it play out. Um, so good job by Paris to bounce back after a map one, which arguably with, with a few things cleaned up here or there, I, I, I think they played pretty well. Um, they could have been up 2-0. Um, but the series tied up at one, and then we go into a raid control, Ben. Yeah, I mean, as we've talked a lot about the season, controls the swing mode, and FaZe has been one of the better control teams. Tom, like, I, I didn't really bring it up I think on the last show we did at the finals, but really like the best control team has kind of won each stage. And we've seen phases just really dominate raid control. I think they kind of toss away this round. Uh, as we kind of watch it out, I felt like they somehow managed to knock out B, which is interesting. Uh, but they held on defense. Uh, and then they were able to just kind of pull away on their offense and then and then went out around and that was that and take momentum in the series in their favor. What do you think it is about FaZe though, as to why they're so good at control? Because for me personally, I feel like control is all slang for the most part. I feel like for, if you're working together as a team, you're working your trades, you're getting map control, and you're just slaying out, I mean, you're going to be a tough team to beat. Um, I think with FaZe, just with so much talent that they have on their roster, I mean, even just watching... Paris like sometimes they get those opening kills and I just couldn't capitalize on them I just felt like there was one time where Aqua was in money and he was just picking up kill after kill but they just couldn't get on that point they couldn't get stacks going because there's always somebody on phase just making an individual play just popping a piece somewhere um but Ben I see you smiling again is there something you want to say <laughs> no I was about to say like other than yourself <laughs> like like think about who are the best control players in Black Ops 4 mm -mm. um I mean <laughs> The, let's be honest, it's usually the most talented players who are good at control. Is which, are, which are many of the players on this team. I, I agree with you. I think it's the slang. You love it, Ben. You love it when we get some face. He loves it. No, he loves it. He loves it. No, 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 no. I was laughing because I was gassed. You just ignored the fact that I guessed you up. Oh, yeah. I said, you other than yourself. I appreciate that. You didn't that. acknowledge that comment. I, I but, acknowledge it. I just, you know. But it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not the guess of face. It's. These these players are really good at knowing when to make individual plays in control and when to rely on their teamwork to take map control. And then when they get in plus situations, they take advantage of it. They're really good at getting streaks in it in in control as well to use to their advantage. They're just they're overall like they they play this map well. I would say checkmate's probably their weakest control, but they've they've won it a couple of times recently. They we've seen that their garrison prowess is really good. Like ultimately, a lot of other top teams have had some issues in control. Aside from Toronto, you know, I don't want to roast your team, Mason, but I think control is probably the one game mode that you guys need to work on. But I, I just think it's the, the intrinsic skill and just the history these players have in this game mode. Yeah, I mean, now that we have Temp on, on our screen right now, I want to I wanna give him some love, man. Because Temp came out, and he played great today. And Donnie played great in this he series. Looks, he looks really good with the Krieg in his hand, to be honest. I feel like yep. it just fits his play style, and I just Agreed. feel like it allows him to sit back and maybe IGL a little bit. Maybe be able to direct people, try and get this team on the same page. Donnie's always been a very vocal player. Um, so to see, see Temp just slaying out, especially against a team like FaZe, is uh is good to see it's good to see because uh obviously he had his struggles with 100 thieves end up making a bunch of changes this year and to see him land himself on this paris roster and and just kind of playing his game and and doing his thing it's uh it's good to see man so i just want to give a shout out to him while we have him on our, on our i mean screen. donnie said too like uh his mindset or and the team's mindset going into this match is that you know they're very unlikely like to try to make top eight but they're gonna try and play play loose and and try to make a run mm -hmm. and they said that they're they're not gonna it's not gonna be the end of the day if they lose against phase so i mean obviously they gave their all and and like you said before like they can easily come out three and two and they can afford this loss against phase because th this is probably the most likely the number one seed for pool for pool a right yep. so yeah. so yeah like uh, as long as Paris doesn't beat themselves up too much with this loss and they they go out and have a positive mindset they can they can make winners and then hopefully make a run of the major and 
hopefully get top eight. And yep. obviously that's that's what teams like Seattle and Paris are really – that's what their mindset is for sure for the next two majors is to try to I mean, place well and get into the top eight for mm-hmm. chance. I mean, if you think about it, they're going to – one of their wins has to be against Seattle, and that's obviously a grudge match with their ex-player classic and obviously it's in past history with all those guys. And they're going to have to win – Two out of three uh, games against Steve's in Minnesota and yeah. Chicago. I think that's that is doable uh, if they play the way that they're playing right now. Um, yeah, they might need a little bit more out of scraps, but you know, I think Maddie's perfectly good as a sub. Like, I think they're set to be able to be with that, that that position that we've seen a lot from like LAG this year. When they get that three two, they get a couple of big wings against top teams, so they get those tiebreakers, and it just comes down to can they get that first winners match? Because if they can. What suddenly, if you win that first winners, your top, your top six, your top six, so they'd be right in the money yeah, on points right and points and what the they mix. need. Yep. Mm-hmm. Top six. I mean, one thing about this round, I want to talk about the map a little bit. This is where Aqua is just going big, right? Picking up kills. I just felt like Paris couldn't get onto this point. We saw them get that A point, right? They were about to get the B point right off the rip. I think they could have won this round for sure. Phase do a really good job just hanging on. Uh, but I don't know what it was. I don't know what it is. Like when, when Yui's picking up these kills, what's taking so long for Paris to get kind of near him and just kind of help him out. Um, sometimes I just feel like this Paris team just needs to get a little bit more, you know, their decision-making needs to be a little bit more. They, they need a couple of go buttons. They the need team. a couple of more go buttons for sure. They need to start that's hitting a, that's, their a, go- that's a Tom gravity thing, right? Yeah. 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 They need to one hit thing, a, like one ahead, thing Tom. that I'm noticing and even in the first hard point, when they started making the comeback that they're doing like a really good job at like getting a first blood in a situation. Yep. But it's some of the follow-up kills that aren't aren't coming in, and FaZe is either popping a two-piece or just playing really well as like a three in a three v four situation to get two kills. Mm-hmm. I agree. So I think I think that's one thing that I'm noticing from Paris that looks way better than did when they didn't have Zapdos. Yep, it's like they're doing the hard part, but they're not doing the easy part. They're yeah, do, they're not they're, they're not closing yeah. out their their they're winning situation. They're not executing situation. on their kills. They're not yep. they're not making use of their kills. And that was like one of the biggest things. Whenever, for the most part, whenever uh, I was competing, and I said this a lot to Asim, whenever I felt like we had a problem as a team or we weren't winning, we'd always go back and watch it. One of the main issues was we would get kills and we wouldn't make plays off the kills that we were making. Which meaning, the game was just we were just making the game so much harder on ourselves. It, it's like the game should never feel that hard. Like yeah. Aqua's probably sitting in money, absolutely frying phase. And in his head, he's probably like, what the fuck? He's probably like, yeah, what? What's going on? Yeah. He's like, what else do I need to do? Like, nah, you know the, what I'm the saying? The way control is played is by waves, man. Mm-hmm. Like, depending on the wave, if you're down or if you're up, a man advantage. If you're up, man advantage, you should get to your teammate and push up and try to get through that wave. And then play the... And then if you win that wave, you play it off the next wave. And I feel like control comes down to like three or four waves. If it's a really close control, it'd be like eight. But like chances are it's like four or five. And and yeah, like you just you just got to play it accordingly. If you have kills, like if you do the hard part and you get the pick, do the easy part. Group up and push together. Mm-hmm. And then even right there, right? The, just the individual talent out of phase. I mean, yeah. Paris, they get all the kills. They have one more guy to deal with in basketball. And Alec just pops a piece. Yeah, he just bails him out. He just bails four, him out. Four bailout yep. yeah, they, they, they four do. Bailout players. They, they do. do. And that's what makes him so good at this game mode. I mean, control, I just feel like every time something goes wrong for phase, somebody bails him out. And it happens time and time again. I swear, every time I watch these guys play, somebody's bailing them out. Even right there, boom. Two piece from Simp, two piece from Arcees, a clean four dead. What, what, yep. It was a good team shot though. They, no, they, it's a good. They, they're they're very good. A, that, that was teamwork. The yeah, they're, they're very good out, playing yeah. off each other. But I just like how quick they are with their decision making. They don't hesitate. They they're always making plays. And then when they get the kills, look at where they are. They just got kills. Basketball and kitchen. Look at look at where they are now. Yeah, there's he's zig, zig circle, their circle. They're... You have yeah. number seven. That's uh, that simp. He's just holding that push through because obviously Paris are all spawning there, so he's not just gonna run at him. But it's just the way that they're able to pin teams into their spawn. I mean, you just pin them, you get them trapped into a corner of the map, and at that point, Paris, they're absolutely trapped. They can't go then, anywhere. I think Zap kind of. Sh- I don't know what your guys' thoughts are. I don't think he should use a streak here. Like, I think he should wait, let them get the kills, and then he streaks them off a of spawn and try and slow them down. Uh, I mean, at this point, with, with 25 seconds left, 25 yeah, the matches on yeah, the line. Yeah, but you're, but you're, 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 calling I mean, in, yeah. you're calling in that streak slows down your team, though, now. Yeah, but, the, but, 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 but what if you don't get the kills? Now you're the yeah. asshole that didn't use the streak at the end of the match. Yeah, exactly. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Facts. You might as well get it off but, because... But what are you going to get from that streak? Well, well the hard part is to get out of bed and get towards B. That's the hardest part because you're getting trapped by the guy Tiki, the guy Money, the guy L, and the guy Open. There's their angles that they're exposed to. So they use the streak to try to get them outside, to get them out of the outside areas and to get them inside. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, the problem is, too, once he called the streak, somebody died. Somebody went yeah. down from Paris. Yeah, exactly. I don't know who it was. Yeah, you can't die. Um, two, he wasted the ping. Did he not? I'm pretty sure he wasted the yeah, ping. He pinged about 40 seconds which, earlier. Which was kind of yet. a waste. I mean, he got the mm-hmm. information. They didn't do anything off the information they got. So he uses the ping, loses the information. Now when he's streaking at the end, he has no idea where anybody is. He's just blindly pro- uh, popping the streak and just placing it wherever he thinks people are. He doesn't connect with anybody, and FaZe are able to just stay down and get some kills. I mean, they don't do anything with the streak. They don't do anything with it. And I'm going to be honest. I mean, we see time and time again people get streaks, but they're not always as useful as you think. You know what I'm saying? Like, streaks streaks can only do so much for you, and depending on the map, too. Like, for instance, like here. Yeah, like, especially the artillery. Yeah, like, what, what is, the missile the, the is really a lot better. The missile yeah, the cruise missile is good. Mm-hmm. Especially if you know how to wrap it. Like oh, you yeah. should. Yeah, the missile, you can get people out of out of buildings. You can get information. And if anybody's out in the open, you're going to kill them. Where the artillery, you're allowing people to just kind of hide and, and play positioning. But at the end of the day, man, FaZe did a great job clutching up. Uh, I think their individual talent kind of bailed them out a little bit. But we go into a raid hard point for the, uh, for the fourth map as FaZe goes up 2-1. to one. There's a listening for the Paris Legion. So uh, let's listen in and see how they sound. I spawned front, I spawned front, I didn't nice, know you. Nice. One's, one's gonna cut mid, hold the pinch. I'm helping you, I'm helping you. Let's go in. We push out the back. Money, money, money. 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 In the hood, one shot. Come in, bro. I'm coming. Got Eddie. Nice. He's out of here. He's out of here. He's out of here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Dead. Bullet on time. He comes and shot me in the back. Two more on it. Two more. Yeah. Okay. Good. Easy shot, right? I don't, I don't hear him. Shot me out, Tiki. Yo, cut out. Out. Yeah, he's going to drive me. What could be P5? Shout out to P5. Close Tiki. Easy one shot. I'm going to ring with you. He's close Tiki. Alright, big kills. I'm new, guys. I'm coming in. I'm on left. We're new. One's Money rock, money rock, money rock a BZ. One more in I'm both. Nice. nice. I'm going to chow me. He's going to chow me. I see him, Don. He's, he's sticky, he's sticky. He's still no, sticky. Still sticky. Still sticky. Still sticky. Take my time. I'm going to chase out on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just yeah, holding yeah. rig. I'm nice. just holding rig. Right side, right side. I got to take my time. Toby Kitchen, Toby Kitchen. I got somehow. Wow. Could they hit open? I'm top ring. Two open. Two open. No. Two open. Kitchen, I'm going to chow open. Two open. I got one. One more. Open a BZ, one shot. Open a BZ, one bullet. He's on a four. On a four. On a four. Get it over. He's on a four, bro. We gotta kill him. Hey, pillars are there. Coming left. I'm going to ring with you. I'm going to ring. Is Zap oh, talking? In there. Did you guys hear Zap? Um, yeah, I heard him say he was going ring at the end there, but... Yeah, I didn't hear him. Bro, yeah, I, he, I he didn't talk God, much. I didn't hear yeah. him much. He didn't uh, talk much. I don't know. I, yeah, and that, listen, I mean, they were on rotation, too. You gotta think, like... Yeah, he might not have had anything to hell. call out. Yeah, he didn't have much to call out. But, I mean, even just, like, little things, you know? He could always just, like, that, that dead space in the comms just kind of fill up the comms a little bit. Um, yeah. personally, like, if it's really quiet, I always felt the need to yeah, speak. Yeah, there, there was a lot of stalemates, a lot of, a lot of silent, like, no one talking, no small talk, like, mm-hmm. At least just know. talking about, you know, what you want to do, what do you want to yeah. hold, make sure somebody helps him here. I mean, you hear Donnie screaming for help in basketball for 10 seconds, it just feels <laughs> yeah. like they're moving in slow motion sometimes. I mean, it, it's, I don't know what it is. Maybe they just, feel, sometimes I feel like players, they don't know their timings on the map. Like, I feel like they're checking corners and they're checking things, they're off spawn. Like, there's nobody there. You know what I'm saying? Just go. Like, help Don fucking flood as fast as you can. Pull out your pistol. Hit the fucking... By the way, people are glitch sprinting now. What is that stop and go shit that I keep seeing, Asim, with this pistol? Um, yeah. It's the new movement, I guess. What, are you eating something over there? What are you munching on? I have some rice and some steak. But uh, you're I killing that figured, shit. You're I haven't killing figured that shit. out the, the movement, but, like, it's really annoying that, like, apparently, Tommy, the way it works is, like, the first three seconds of your sprint is like a, sp- a sprint boost. Uh huh. So you have to like re reenact or reactivate that sprint boost every three okay. seconds that you're sprinting. That's so fucking fugaze. What yeah, the fuck are we playing? Uh, I guess it's like World War Two, like the sprint, the the stutter yeah. step. Uh huh. Like nah, that, but... but in World War Two, the stutter well, step was just so if somebody came in front of you, you were just able to snap right away. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But yeah. in this, it's yeah. like that, but it's not World exactly War II, that. Like. You ne- you didn't get that initial sprint yeah. boost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah. I've been I've literally been doing that movement since the game came out. Pretty yeah, much. Yeah, I have seen that. Tommy's and been doing that. I like. I mean, I pretty much found that out like day one that that's the fastest. No, I, people no, are trying to tell the, me like the just reason why people haven't been doing it as much faster, time? but like. Uh-huh. 
I've always Tom, known Tom, that the, the one reason why boost is way faster. Yeah, the reason why people don't do it as much is because like at first it like it evens out if you sprint for a long distance. So like obviously if we sprint for a very long time, Tom will beat me if he's doing the sprint glitch. Uh -huh. But if you're doing it for a short distance before with how uh with how the speed grip gave you more movement beast and boost. Like it wasn't, it was fine because you're still fast. But because we're so slow in this game now, because of how they nerfed the speed grip, uh -huh. the sprint, the sprint glitch really helps. Yeah, no, I could tell a lot of people are doing it. And I noticed yeah. in league play that so many people are doing this fucking sprint glitch now, and people be seeing me losing full in league play all the time because the timings, the timings are off. I mean, I'm hitting things and people are getting there like two or three seconds before me. And I'm like, what the hell are they doing? And I'm yeah. watching a kill cam and I see them doing this fucking sprint cancel thing, and I see pros doing it. And uh, obviously, I understand it now. Like I've been doing it as well. Um, but Tom, I didn't even know. Tom said it was in the beginning of the game. It's been in the game. It's just, it's just a, uh, it's interesting that a lot of pro players are starting to do it now, um, consistently. I'm surprised um, people haven't been doing it for longer. I yeah, mean, me too. Like even from the rip of the game, I'm telling you, like as soon as I loaded in, I did it, and like people are running speed grip, like, oh, we're so fast, we're so fast. But like I'm right, I'm right next to you or in front of you. Yeah. Frank yeah, Legend. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so. But... If you're if you guys are watching, man, make sure you guys are practicing that sprint glitch, man. If you especially if you're a you know an AR player or sub player trying to hit those spots, trying to get there quick, um, it's definitely a good tip for you guys if you guys want to get the spots uh, a little bit quicker. But Ben, I noticed that you paused here with a BZ using his streak here at the end of the game. Yeah. What's going on? I want to talk about kind of how the end of this game played out. I think this comes back to your earlier comment that when your phase were making a few mistakes. I don't think you're normally going to see phase uh, use a streak on offense. They get one kill and they team kill the guy in kitchen and it sort of cascades in what probably should have been a close that situation here where they would have won 250 to like 170. Suddenly this kind of game gets really close and comes down to phase breaking on the P5. Yeah, I think a B, I think the team kill is just a big part of that. Yeah, I mean, he killed the guy that was pushed up on the map, pushed down in that cut just being a nuisance and he streaks him. I don't know if there's a miscommunication. He probably did it. I mean, he obviously didn't do it on purpose. Um, but it was just definitely just an L streak out of a BZ. He streaks his teammate. It allows Paris to use their numbers and hit the front of that hill. They do a good job making it mixy and, and pushing this to another hill number five. Um, but then at the end, it was just super mixy, very back and forth with the trades. Uh, but FaZe end up coming out on top, um, as they usually do when it comes down to trading situations. Is there anything that you, if you were Paris, that you would have done differently at the end here? Or do you think they played this pretty well? They just, you know, couldn't get into this hill, couldn't stay down. What's good? What's I didn't really notice anything on the pair, so they were messing let's up. Watch let's, it. Let's, let's watch, watch it and it. see. I mean, a couple of one on one challenges, but this is like just kind of a wild situation. It's, there's not there's a lot of stuff going down here. They get a good kill, so they get a little bit of health control, and they have arches control. Mm -hmm. They have a decent setup. They give up arches. So the last guy of a spawn will pick that up. So this is interesting. A BZ he ends up having an artillery. He's going to use it. Zap is able to stay alive somehow near the hill and pick up a kill. He's going rogue. He starts pushing out Zig, but Selim with a big two piece nade, I think, really helped him out. I think yeah. that two piece nade yeah. was huge. I don't think I think if Sel doesn't get that two piece nade, you have a guy in hill for Paris. You have two guys kitchen. As long as they kill him and, and trade him out of there, they should be good to go. But um Sel with a big I don't even know where the hell did he two piece nade him from? How did he get a two piece grenade? Where the hell where, how did that uh, even happen? Let's 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 go back and peep. We could go back and peep. Paris do a good job getting back in too. They work some trades, they work a pinch, they they get the kills. But where the hell? I'm I'm so confused. Let me watch this back real quick. Uh, in the hell, I think. Yeah, yeah. So sales number six, right? He's in money. Did no, he? No, it's two guys in kitchen. It's two guys in kitchen. He might have stuck one of them, and they were sitting. Right oh next to each my other. god, yeah. that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. So he got he got the two biggest kills in kitchen. He collapses on hill. Fizz gets in. But then Paris do a great job breaking on in again. They work yeah. a pinch. You see uh, number three. That's going to be Aqua. He starts working around. He starts getting that arc control. They're hitting out every single lane. They start working a pinch on this hill. Donnie gets a big kill in kitchen. They collapse onto this point. Bada bing, bada boom. They get the break. Um, ten seconds left to go. Phase. They they what needs seven points to win. Uh, Paris looking really good here. I would I would like to see Maddie play his life here. I, I think he got caught a little bit. He got a kill right off rotation. He goes to throw a stun. He ends up getting caught if he could just stay alive. But then the splits come in. Yeah, this is a tough spot for Paris now. And they don't pick it up. And they don't pick it up. No, based don't. off their spawn. I mean, that number four, Donnie, I don't know if he called it out, but it might have been a little bit too late. I feel like once Donnie spawned up, his teammate was already getting shot in the back. But No, once number one spawns, he should know that they're gym pitching. Mm -hmm. So eight and five, they're yeah, pitching. When you, when he, he, get should the spawn, he should know. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, 100%. He should know. Um, he turns. He goes to turn at the last second, and he just it's too late. He just yeah, doesn't realize it in time. Uh, but Paris could have won this map. 
We could have yeah. went to a game five. I think Paris, they get into that. It goes to another rotation of Hills. They get back into the P1, um, and they just don't pick up the pinch. They, they need to realize that as soon as you get that close spawn to Hills, somebody's got to be pinching. Um, and it was two guys pinching. So but if you're if you're Paris, you they could have won this series three one. I think the the control wasn't that close. Um, but it, I think like to just kind of put a bow on it, Tom. Not to cut you off. I'm sorry, but no, like, you're good. You're good, bro. I think it's just Paris is getting close now with the slain. They're not getting blown out on maps that are pretty decent for phase. It was these one or two plays at the end that some of that comes with time with the team. They need to figure out if they can stay a little bit more composed. Maybe their comms need to improve a little bit better and they make the right plays. Like they're going to get some big map wins against some tough teams in this group. Mm -hmm. Good series out of phase. Good series out of Paris. I thought it was a pretty good series in general. I thought, uh, you know, the way we were talking about it on last show, we were saying phase was just going to mop these guys. But Paris, they held their own. They held their own. These maps are close. Uh, regardless, I enjoyed watching it. Um, but then we go into another series, right? We go into the Florida Mutineers yeah. going up against the Toronto Ultra and, uh, Listen, man, I I'm so confused with this Florida team. I'm going to be honest. Sometimes they look incredible. Sometimes they look shit. Today yeah. they look good. Today they looked really good. They did. Well, this is the thing always with Florida. We have always talked about this is the hardest team to predict because talent-wise, they can beat any team in the league, but they can also lose to any team in the league. And they really are the hardest that, team to predict. Like throughout the entire year that they would get all these big clutch wins and they'd lose to Seattle. And you're just like, well, I don't know what to think of this team. They started to play a little bit better last stage. And then had a little bit of a tough end at the major. Uh, I think this is a huge win. It totally like adds a massive curveball now to Group B, uh, especially if Dallas rebounds in this group now. Uh, I know ASIM, your team's in this group. Like this could suddenly be like we saw with Group A, where it comes into some crazy tiebreakers on the last day. Obviously, Florida gonna have to win a couple more games in this group, but it was a good showing from the Florida boys. And I think from the Toronto side, you're gonna have one stinker series every couple of weeks. The, you know, they're just coming off a major where they didn't really get the placing they wanted. A mid practice hasn't been so good, but you just got to brush this one off. The fundamentals weren't there today. I know Marky B tweeted that out, uh, but you still have opportunities against other teams in this group to go ahead and still grab that number one seed. Yeah, no, I mean, ben, I, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, no, go go ahead, ahead Ace. Okay, uh, all I was gonna say was that yeah, I think I think you're right, Ben. I think with the uh, the new pickup with Reese on Dallas, that makes that team look a lot scarier, and maybe they can make a run in this pool. And then you have teams like like us in Toronto that are like that place top three in the major, so we're gonna be like a ho hopefully a top seeded team in the pool. And then with Florida making big upsets by beating Toronto today, and like like try like like dude, that that's what I'm saying. Like Florida getting this win is huge for not only them. But it's also huge for like teams like us to like guarantee the first seed if we just simply beat Toronto. Mm. But um, yeah, I think I think it's it's gonna get to that point where if Florida, Dallas, us, and Toronto are all playing really well, that this pool might go down to like three twos yep. across the board. Yeah, no, hundred percent. And dude, I'm so excited to see Dallas play with Vivid. Um, I was really excited to see what Florida dropped today. I mean, I was just saying this. The competition's at an all-time high. It's at an all-time high. You never know what teams are going to come out with. We're getting to the end of the year now where everybody pretty much knows how to play the game. It's going to come down to who makes the less mistakes. It's going to come down to whose talent could just push them over that edge and just come out on top. But Florida, they come out. Uh, they looked a little flat at first. Toronto, they ended up taking a lead. Uh, you saw Bance. He was meditating again. Uh, I think that's why they almost got the reverse sweep. Uh, but it was a really good series. And uh, at first, I was like, oh, God, like Florida, they're mopping these guys. And especially in the in the second S&D, there's just a lot of clutches coming in from uh, Florida. And I was just really surprised. I mean, I, I couldn't believe a team like Toronto was letting some of this stuff happen. Um, but this first map, Florida does a good job just uh, staying in the game early because they went down. Um, and they just made sure that they hit those rotations and just played off each other. And their teamwork looked a little bit better. Um, Havoc looked really good. Yeah, I feel like Havoc really and uh, nice. Havoc and Neptune have been working really well off one another. I feel like they're starting to hit that rhythm, maybe hit that form. What do you think, Ben? This is one of those series that they've been waiting for where both of their sub players fried. They outslayed Toronto by 30 kills in this series. Ma, which we haven't we haven't seen a lot from Florida this year. We've been waiting for that kind of slaying performance out of the team. I I thought both of those sub players looked great. I thought Neptune looked fantastic in in this map. I think uh, Havoc looked great at the end of the series. Um, and on the flip side for Toronto, they had a real tough series at a cami. Like it'll happen. Uh, I don't think they're going to often get outslayed by a team like this. Um, I think watching back this first map before getting to the listen, I just felt that the, as we watched the, the second rotation of this map, I felt like Florida's teamwork was just on another level and they were able to pull away. Yep. But let's go into an Astro game listening with Toronto Ultra and see how they sound. I'm going right here. Good question. Left. 
Me home, huh? This is so dead. quiet. On the mansion. Weeks, guys. Always is. Pushed up more WhatsApp now, Sky. Havoc's, Havoc's absolute, uh... Havoc's mid. Havoc's mid, yeah. right, Havoc's mid absolute. Yeah, right. Stop ringing me. Yeah, come, to me. come to me, come to me. Pushed up, pushed up. Uh, right side ring. Behind the black man. Oh, one's, one's gonna be mansion. Yeah, I've got, I've got him right, black Jamie. Black man. I'll go, I'll one's go. Mansion. Close, 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 don't top laundry, Ben. Yeah, left him, left him. Water, guys. Wait, I'll, 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 I'll kill him. Kill water. Guys, water. Dead. Nice. Right, let's go. Water. Let's go. Ring room. Two, 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 two. Let's go, let's go. Yeah, they have streaks, they have streaks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him right, right. Uh, I'll tell you where I spawn. He's fucking still in, still in, Yeah, I spawn yeah. more. Nothing more, nothing more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six, 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 one zero. Absolute sick. Absolute sick. Yeah. Absolute sick. Weak. 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 Two six. Two six. One word. Water steps. One word. Yeah. I'll play. Okay. 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 That's one basketball still. I spawned it right rock, right rock. I spawned uh, pillars, pillars, pillars. Pillars killed me. I spawned driver, I spawned driver. I spawned driver. I spawned driver. Yeah, laundry, yeah, laundry. Then you left, then you left. Close. They're gonna know we're here. Havoc. He's already here. Havoc's one laundry. shot, one shot on the left, one shot on the left. He's still there. Yep, absolute. Absolute on time. Yeah. That's in. We can go quick. Nice, yeah. Top ring, top ring, yeah. Top ring, kill mid as well. On your left. I see him in the middle. One more, one more, one more white peak in left. He's on the black fan, on the black fan. Let's fucking go, boys. Mid, mid, mid. We're gonna see the black fan. dead mid. We are so much better than these on the black fan. Right, right, right. We can win. We'll just have to come in. One hit time. Neptune, Neptune on time. He's right side time, right side time. Yeah, they're spawning close. Yeah, yeah. Dude, he's coming in. He's pushed out. Yeah, yeah. All right, good like, listening. Uh, definitely yeah, a little calmer than most. It's teams. getting it's, better, Tom. It's getting better. Yeah, it's getting Tom. better. I their, mean, their small talk's good. Yeah, I, I think we'll probably agree. Like the energy in that call out probably wasn't there. Like you don't need to be frantic, but like I mean, every team's. Different. I mean, no, that's yeah. that's their gimmick, Ben. Is is that they don't they don't pack a lot of energy in their comms. But I will say the two things I will say is like number one, their comms are getting a lot better. There's not that much silence like there usually is. Like I think over the stages, you see, like I've I've heard them be extremely quiet, and it's it's good to hear that they're talking a lot more. Uh, and two was like I think the like based on what this map was like I haven't I didn't watch the whole series, but the the thing that Toronto is so good at is that their pillar. Like the pillar of the team is insight, and and you always seen insight with anything above a one. Mm -hmm. But like right now he's double negative and like I th I think like that's maybe why Toronto's maybe down so much because I feel like insights their like pillar their consistency and whenever he's like doing anything but uh like anything over a one like this team usually is doing a lot better. Yeah, no, but sure. but I feel like that also like it's almost like a full system, right? He gets a one because they're putting him in positions and he's getting easy kills because the sub players are so aggressive and apply, yeah, apply so much yeah, pressure yeah. that they're setting up those easy trades where he's going to then hold down a power lane and get another two or three kills. So you're valid. Like. No, but, but inside the way inside plays is that he's not fast. So when he's locking down a lane, like he better get you one or two for you, for him to play the way he plays. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. if he's playing really slow and he's drop and he's double negative, that's really bad for Toronto. Cause not only is he baiting a bunch of people, but he's not getting the kills that he's supposed to be getting. Yeah, and like, but like that. There's nothing wrong with how inside plays. That's their that's their that's play their style. system. Yeah, like yeah, it's their system. If that's how they want to play, that's how they're gonna play. But like like I said before, if insight's double negative, the like Toronto Ultra cannot afford insight being double negative, but they can afford Kleenex being double negative because of how fast Kleenex plays yeah. and his yeah. play style and and how he what he does for the team. It's just the impact that a certain player has on a map. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Yeah, I mean somebody like Kleenex or or Bantz running around the map. Uh, at least they're putting pressure and they're putting bullets into people exactly. with adding that damage. But somebody like Insight, who's just kind of just playing super slow, holding a lane, um, if he's not getting those kills, it's going to hurt the team a lot. Um, because at that point, if Insight dies, it all falls apart. I mean, their, their turret on the map is just once he falls, the whole system falls. So yep. he's a big part of, of this team. Insight's a really big part of this team. And when he's struggling, it definitely shows. But I also, I just got to give credit to, to Neptune and Havoc, like Ben said, because, you know, yeah. Insight might be struggling, but watching this map back, I mean, Havoc and, and, and Neptune are all over the place. They're making they're, plays. They're making plays. They're pushing out cuts. They're working off one another. Um, and the one thing I, I love is how quick they are with their decision making. Like they're just they're not hesitating, and that's that's a problem that we just saw with Paris, right? The hesitations, uh, the just taking too long to make those plays. You see a clear as day difference when you're looking at these guys play um, with the sub players, and just kind of how quick they're moving off the map. They're flipping spawns really fast. Even their streak usage was very great. Like you said, Ben, they used their streaks. They worked off one another, and they were able to work a good break. So their teamwork just really pushed them over the edge. I think.
uh, in that first map. So great job by Florida Mutineers. They definitely looked like they're, they've they been practicing and putting in the work, and their teamwork looked a lot better. So they were able to take out the first map. Then we go into another standoff S&D today. Um, so both both series today, we saw standoff S&D in the, in the second hard point, um, which is interesting to me. I guess people just want to give it a go and, and see what they can do. Um, but right off the rip, Florida Mutineers uh, have it. Comes out with a big clutch. He has a 2v4 out of them. Yeah, I mean, 2v4. it very quickly became a 2v2. But I feel like this map, again, I assume Toronto has done all their practice. Uh, Florida kind of bailed themselves out in a couple of weird situations. This round, we'll watch the third round. We'll watch a, another round. That will kind of sum up the map on Toronto's side. They had a lot of opportunities to take rounds and get bloods. And then ultimately, like, Florida just had some insane clutches. I mean, they just clutched up this map. They clutched up this map. I think Toronto, they're going to go back and watch this and, and just fucking, they're going to lose their fucking mind. Because uh, I think I think Toronto should have closed out a lot of these rounds, but just the individual talent. It just goes to show how much talent really is on this Florida well, roster. Well, watch, watch this round, Tom. This round should be over. This Havoc dies with the bomb in Delhi. I like, can't believe the this. Worst spot, the worst spot for the bomb to be in. And somehow, it's a 2 Big wake they, running up mid with the Craig. They, they somehow <laughs> win this round. Like, it's actually mind-blowing. Yep. Uh, Cammy hands up going. I mean, Cammy just shouldn't even have child. Cammy shouldn't have child, but even now, right? 3v2 situation. You know Cammy's got to be calling out that the bomb's down. He literally stared at it. Oh, my God. Um, They somehow... Wick is finessing. Yeah, Big Wick is just... He's, he's dipping and weaving with 18 seconds left. And then it was very weird to me. Why didn't the, Why didn't Toronto check the bomb? Oh. Yeah, like... What right is there. going on? And, and Toronto... The, the, I'll tell you exactly what's going on. Toronto, they're just challenging everything. When all they need to do is stay alive, just they're throw shimmies. Challenging. Yeah, they're solo challenging. When they don't even need to be challenging. They're they're solo they went from Neptune on inside. Yeah. Just throw shoulders. Just throw shoulders and make sure that they can't get to the bomb. There's 18 seconds left. Just just throw shoulders, figure out where they are, and once he hops on the bomb, make your play. But instead, they're all challenging stuff that they shouldn't be challenging. In Florida, they took advantage of it. They won all their ones. They were able to get numbers and then get that bomb down. Um, just big plays coming out of Awakening and Neptune there. And then, like, and then we'll watch real. this round, and Toronto's a good job of getting this blood, but watch watch what happens after Kleenex gets his blood. Mm -mm, good job by uh, by Toronto to get the to get the first blood, but then there's a team need coming in. So 3v3 situation. This is what I'm talking about. You see how these uh, how these defensive teams are forced up on that, B, on that A bomb site? They're forced to push in. That's why I really like this map. Um, but good plays, good shots out of them. They stacked that site. You saw it in the phase match, some blind counters coming in where people started stacking that A site, and then people rotated over to B. They were catching teams off guard a little bit. Um, so I thought that was interesting. We might start seeing some mind games, a little bit of mind games coming on this map. Um, so it is really exciting to watch. Uh, and I think I think people are going to start coming out with some bread and butters. I think as, the, as time goes on, pe the map is going to be changing a, a, a lot as time goes yeah, on. Yeah, I, mean, I, I agree. This is going to evolve the same way Express does. It's going to be a really critical game five, I think, in a bunch of series or, or critical game two, depending on how you look at it. Mm -hmm. uh, and for a lot of teams that, um, you know, now have to kind of put this map in the pool because Checkmate's gone, they're, they're going to start developing some strats. And I'm curious to see. Uh, it seems like defensive side is probably the preferred side right now, just being able to hold down uh, like the, the farm side, like the A side of the map. I'm curious if it's going to hold like that throughout the rest of the stage. Yeah, one thing I really like about Florida right now is I feel like they just have a lot of confidence in their gameplay. They're not scared to make plays. Um, even in S&D, you have Neptune. He's pushing up on this tank. He's he's not scared to hit a route and, or hit something and, and just really just put the pressure on these guys, no matter who they're playing. And it just goes to show how much individual talent these guys actually are, what, like what I was saying before. And I think that's why we get so fucking frustrated with these guys, man. Like when, when they're not performing well and they don't look good and you're just like, what the fuck's going on with Florida? You know, like so, there's so many series this year that they should be closing out or should be winning, and they're not. So to see them come out and beat Toronto here today, um, I know it was a close map, uh, close match, and they ended up getting almost got reverse sweep. But for the most part, I feel like Florida looked a lot better today, a lot better. And I'm hoping that we could see some consistency from them moving forward. Um, but we'll see, we'll see. Well, I mean, I mean, we we talked about it in the last stage. Like they went on that run. What they won two or three games in a row. We're like, okay, well, maybe you know they hadn't won back to back games all year. We're like, okay, well, maybe this team's starting to figure it out. And then they get to the major. They beat Thieves, who obviously weren't playing that well at the Major, and then they lose back-to-back -back series 3-0 fashion to New York, who obviously made it to the finals, and that Optic team that was on that run, and just, 
uh, kind of shatter all the momentum they had. I mean, that, that's momentum. Florida's biggest problem, Ben, is yeah. the inconsistency. They lack it. Like, like you just said, like they'll go into the last two matches of the stage four, and they'll win two, like both their matches. Then they'll they'll play the major. They'll they'll win a convincing three one against Steve's, and then they just get back to back three out. And it's mm -hmm. like I just think like that's like like that's their play style. They play very loose. So if they're getting their kills and they're playing loose, then like they look really dominant because of how yeah. talented they are. But whenever they're getting caught in, like, getting caught sprinting, getting caught playing by themselves, like, they'll just lose 3-0. That's one, th one thing I want to say before I, I, I got to go to dinner is from just watching that first hard point, it looked like they're playing they're playing their their rotations really well. They're actually holding their rotations. They're playing safe on their their first initial, like, fights. And then they're winning gunfights and they're pushing out and making it harder on the other team. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I just wanted to get that off my chest before I, I go I go out to dinner with the boys. Have a so. good day, Tom. Hey, Tom, Have a good day. Wait, Tom who are you going Enjoy out to dinner with? It's myself, uh -huh. Soap, uh, Wes. There we go. Okay, Wes. Boy Dylan. That's so. a good squad. It's a good squad. It's a good squad. It's a good squad. It's one of the best. Squad. I don't know Dylan, but he seems like a nice guy. Yeah. Right. He's, he's one of the best for sure. All right. Well, but you have enjoy fun, the man. Rest of the flank, appreciate boys. you, bro. Appreciate Have a good day. Have a good day. Thanks for having me for a little bit. Have a good day. And have a good day. mafia. Never fucking forget it, Tom. Never forget it. Have a good day. But, uh, uh, shout out to Tom Gravity for coming on. He didn't say much, but he was chilling. We felt the presence. We felt the vibe. So we appreciate Tom hopping on and just, uh, you know, saying a few words here or there. So shout out to Tom Gravity. Let's get a rabbit in the chat. But then we go into a map number three. It's a raid control. We always see raid controls. I feel like so many so many teams love playing this map. Um, Florida, they're up 2-0. to o, But, guys, this series got really mixy really fast. I didn't expect yeah. this to happen. <laughs> Can we talk about this control choice out of Florida? This is a little bit of an oddball one to me. They haven't won a raid, like, at all. And so maybe they tried to sneak this in and, like, play some mind games with Toronto. Oh, I think maybe they just were working on it before. Yeah. This, this must, that must be what happened. But but then on, on that flip side, like, that's a, it's a risky team to pick that against because this is by far Toronto's best control. So I don't know if I necessarily agree with that overall strategy. And ultimately, Toronto were able to clutch up and get a little bit of momentum in this series going forward. Yeah, they got a little bit of momentum. They were able to push it to a game number five. But what do you think it was for Toronto? Do you think they just kind of had a mental reset? Uh, maybe just focused up a little bit? Do you think Florida was kind of letting up a little bit? What do you think was the main issue here? Well, I mean, I think I think Florida makes a lot of, like, critical mistakes, especially in this round. Uh, as we kind of watch uh, this play out, um, they're, they're basically going to like let Toronto, especially Cammy get in a position to kind of make place here around bank. Like, they, like, I don't know again with the street call here. So like there's 15 seconds left, right? You're in the first round. You don't necessarily need to call on these streaks. Mm -hmm. You're on offense. Obviously maybe you're trying to get a couple of ticks. They're on trying B. to win an offensive round. Tr trying to win offense, but maybe trying to get a few ticks. But like, I feel like your timings get so screwed up when you have two guys sliding in the kitchen like this and you're calling in streaks. You haven't cleared out bank you have no idea if anyone's there someone could slide into the back back they're setting themselves up for failure and we watch as it sort of plays out neptune's gonna call on streaks his teammates gonna engage that guy in bank neptune's gonna die they repinch the guy in kitchen but ultimately the gunfights don't go their way they're streaking the hill their, their teammates have no pressure front and that's the end of the round yeah so you basically invested a streak didn't get anything for it and toronto hold on defense i mean hey they almost got in there. If they would have killed Bans, if Bans doesn't pop a two-piece right there, they could have got in. They got two dead. Havoc picks up a big two-piece. He gets he gets traded out by Bans. Yeah. Bans picks up a big two-piece. If Bans goes down and that last guy from Florida can get down on that hill and just stay down and, and let his teammates just kind of flood in with him and get a quick stack real quick, that could have easily went in favor of Florida. Well, they, they, they could have saved the streak for later on their second offense. Oh, they you definitely I mean? could have. Like, they definitely like, could have saved not the streak. A, it's not a high, like, you don't have, like, a high percentage guarantee that that streak's going to, like, help you out in this yeah. situation. Teams are so much better now on defense and just not getting blood in that situation. They get a way out basketball. They get a way out in a tiki. And you're going to still have to win these close wage 1v1 to try and get hill control. Yeah. So I don't know if I necessarily agree with that play. And then from here... Just this is classic Toronto offense. They do a good job, good teamwork. They work the map, ultimately get this offensive win, and then from there, this match basically over. Yeah, it was basically over. Um, why do you think that teams are playing raid control all the time, Ben? How come? How come we're not seeing well, the controls? I understand, like it's because checkmate sucks, and a lot of teams hate Garrison, so that's how raid ends up in the series. Uh, and it plays into that strong suit of the, some of the top teams, mm -hmm. especially Toronto and Phase. They play a lot in series against teams. Uh, the only team they probably would play this against is like LAG. That's their best control map. But like they'll score up with most everybody else. And it, it promotes a lot of like really good teamwork. And if you know how to make individual plays, 
I think Toronto always does a good job on offense of like knowing how to not mess up the spawns uh, for uh, uh, when they're they're attacking B on offense. Try and spawn the team laundry so they make it easier to hit the B side and stack it and win. Uh-huh. These have really good teamwork, and and I'm sure that's also down to communication as well. Yeah, not 100. percent Just a good job uh, from both teams. Honestly, I felt like both teams were were very head head to head uh, this series. I felt like it was a really good series going very back and forth. Toronto, they were able to squeak out the first two rounds, and at this point, um, I felt like they just set themselves up, right? Once you go yeah, up 2-0. Yeah, I mean, I could skip through it, but I mean... Yeah, I mean, uh, you can it's skip not, through it's, it. It's, it basically ends right there. Toronto Toronto beats them pretty quickly. Um, it was a pretty good map out of them. But then we go into a, a Moscow hardpoint. Um, we don't see this map much. I actually enjoy watching this map. I, I like Moscow hardpoint. I think it's one of the better maps in the rotation. Um, I, I really like watching it. But Toronto were able to bring this one back and push this to a game number five, Ben. Yeah, and again, I think the weirdest thing about this series, watching it back, and I, I wouldn't give the control loss like square on Florida because yeah. this is very they're not they were in with offense. I think Florida forward. definitely are going to go back and be mad about how they play the end of this game. I think they they the P two got a little bit too crazy at the end, and they made some critical mistakes on the P three when they shouldn't have, mm-hmm. and ultimately allowed Toronto to get back in this series. If if Florida wants to be more consistent as a team, they should have closed it out the series at this point. Yep, well, let's go into an Astro game listening with Florida and see how they're, uh, how they're common. No, hi, guys. Um, two questions. Two questions. Two questions. Yeah. You guys play with slow back. There's two they're questions gonna, in boss right now. They're going to spawn out deep, okay? Yep. Everyone take your time here. Stay alive, bank. Don't force anything yet. I'll tell you when to force, okay? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah two, uh, yo, one for the, the regular, two bank. Okay, you can force right about now, I think. You oh, can force right now. Yeah, you can force now. I'm on my side, I'm on my side. Yo, Jimmy, lobby, Jimmy. lobby, lobby inside, lobby inside. He is pitching play, out, play, pitching play, out. Play, play, He's pitching, other guy's pitching, other guy's pitching. There's yep, three, three panics, there's three panics. Same left, same left. Three left. Three panics, three panics. 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 Three yeah, yeah, he's 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 still good window. I'm one shot. Hill, 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 Oh, glove, glove, two glove, two glove. One, one shot. One could be Eskies, right? Uh, yeah, no, yeah. back to the back. Yo, 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 listen, play outside. Watch your gold finish. Watch your gold finish. Watch my gold. Watch my gold. Watch my gold. Yeah, I can try picking picking up in a second. Keep holding it. Keep holding it for a second. I'll tell you what. Well, so I'll be honest with you. I. Are not bad of a listening. Oh, fuck. Sorry, Ben. Oh, yeah, just get it back to the same spot. One thing that really caught my eye was, or not caught my eye, just listening to the listening. Havoc sounds really good. I like yeah, the way does. that when he when he's making a play, when he's hitting a route, he's talking to his team, he's letting them know to wait, he's letting them know what to do, he's he's small calming, just letting them know what the route he's taking, kind of what he's doing on the map, and then on top of that, he's trying to let them know kind of where people are coming from, that they could be missing one, he's counting players for them. Um, so just seeing the leadership kind of coming out of havoc was was amazing to see, especially somebody who lost his spot on this team coming back into this uh, this team, just really stepping up in the comms. Uh, the one thing I wanted to bring up is like even with that listening, like even though he was doing a good job of like saying it that they were gonna they were missing one, but like uh-huh. I feel like that's a situation where like you can't really be so certain that someone's behind you, and like re- realistically speaking, you should know that he can't he can't be there. So like Ben, like if we break it down yeah. to when he, like he said he was gonna go Eskies at twenty seven seconds on Street Hill, like. He said that there was going to be a guy back P2, but realistically speaking, it, it wasn't really possible. Mm-hmm. So, like, right here, he says, like, in the listening, hey, guys, I'm going Eskies. And then when he goes up Eskies and Caesar dies street, he says, oh, the, for sure, there's a guy back P2. But, like, the reason why there's not a guy back P2 and Caesar's wanting P3 is because the street hill is still popped. Yeah. I mean, unless somebody took the mega ultra fucking long Nobody's route. Nobody's taking a route yeah, at 33 yeah. seconds. Unless like, that's somebody... impossible. Like, yeah. right here, when Caesar spawns, like, Havoc is really certain that there's a guy back P2. But, like, no. Yeah, maybe with, like, P1 popped, but it's still the street hill. So, he mm-hmm. should know, like, they're not back P2. Yeah, maybe it was just, like, a like a timing thing. Or maybe he just miscounted in his head. Or I don't know what he was thinking. But he didn't sound like he was confident. I mean, he, he sounded like one could be there. I don't, I don't know if he's... He wasn't 100% like, one's P2, one's P2, you know? 
Um, I see a yeah. lot of people in the chat complaining about spawns at the end of this map. Uh, was there a Fugue spawn, Ben, that came in at the end of this map that, that a lot of people are talking about? This P2 spawn? Yeah, let me try and skip to it. Unfortunately, the video is a little buggy, so I might it might be a little bit uh, tricky here for me to skip ahead. Oh, now it's loading, which is good. Was it before? Let me skip ahead to the P2, and we'll talk about the P2s and the P P3s because that's kind of... The, the map was very back and forth, though. The whole time, it was very back and yeah, forth. Every like team really was hitting rotation to rotation. The teams are doing a good job staying disciplined and making sure they don't let the game get, a, get too far ahead uh, of them. But um, towards the end here, right? Look at the, look at the score, 200 to 200. Um, this is where things get uh, get really mixy. Um, and when you have two teams that are staying really disciplined um, and they're matching each other in talent, it's always going to come down to something like this. It's always going to go to the wire, and that's what makes Call of Duty so fucking exciting, guys. That's why I love watching shit like this. I was off my seat. I was like, Maron, Toronto, they're doing the reverse sweep. Um, and uh, they, they, they did it. They, well, they should have done it. Um, but they end up pushing the game five. But let's take a look over here on these on these spawns. A lot oh, of people are saying wow. it's their okay spawn. Oh, How did my spawn God. There? Let's take a look because uh, I see a lot of people talking about it. So number eight gets kills. How the fuck... Did Toronto yeah, spawn there? Yeah, that's a weird one. I've never seen that one. Before. I've never um, seen that in my I, life. I, I've seen that happen when like the streets open and they just yeah, spawn close, but I've never seen wait, it in that situation. Wait, that is yeah. Fugues, bro. That, that's, I've never seen it when streets open. Oh chat. What the fuck is that? They did everything you they gotta want? do. They have a guy coming front. They have people pushing the back. They have a guy literally in bank. And they just, Toronto just spawns on the hill. Even number five dies and spawns and, P3. And, and, and know what's crazy too? Look where number three spawns for Toronto. He spawns out. Look, five spawns out. Look, three spawns yeah. out and his teammates spawn the hill. Oh my God. That's crazy to me. Yeah, that's, so that's crazy. That's, uh, everything's kind of, everything's kind of blocked. Everything's blocked. Everything's blocked, but Toronto should be spawning deep. I mean, <laughs> behind Globe was not blocked. I mean, maybe by six. But I, but the, the other, like, go, if you go back, like, should that Florida guy spawn, like, S, like, I don't know. This is a weird one. I don't one. know. Go, go Why would spawn? Like, does, does number I, eight, so does number three spawn up, and then number eight dies, and then more, yeah. is that what happened? Like, yeah, but should so number like, five spawn street at this point? Number, yeah, like, that's, like, that's my question, Ben, was going to be, if number six is sitting where, he, where he's sitting, is that considered blocking street? Because he's not really looking, I mean, yeah, I think... Like, look, I think number See, yeah, seven why, turns why does number five spawn front right there? Because well, the front spawn's open. Yeah, but you would think and he I would think spawn he spawned... street, no? No, because that's the priority spawn. Okay. Is like the, so, is like, so it just like doesn't... All right, so he spawns front, and then and then what happens after? How does number three from Toronto spawn out, but his teammate spawns on the hill? I'm trying to see. Because now, now oh, every, everything's yeah. now blocked. Yeah, so block seat, so... I don't understand. No, but that. my my question was I don't think behind Globe was blocked because as you see number seven turn to right mid alley. Like, watch. Watch, number seven will turn, like, towards the hill, and boom, that's when they spawn. You see? You think that's what it was? They said you think that little tiny turn? No, no, no. What I was trying to say is that that, that turn should have made it to where the globe spawn would be open. I mean, I don't I don't think it but matters. Globe, but, but I don't know. Yeah, it didn't matter. I think they should all be spawning where number three spawning. Everything's blocked. Toronto should be spawning across the fucking map. Period. They yeah, should all be yeah, squad yeah, spawning yeah, for Toronto there. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, dude, and if, if you're Florida, you're probably losing your fucking mind. You're probably like, like how is there so many heads here? Like, you what's can't, going on? You can't predict that. Like, you yeah, just no, you can't. can't. I mean, you even can't. watching it back, it's hard to understand it. Like, watching well, it back, well, it's well, like... Well, let's watch this back because then Florida... Okay, so they get kind of bs in a situation, but they definitely... Screw up this P3. So watch what happens. Basically, at this point, Toronto's going to be close to winning on oh, time. Oh, Caesar's getting chased. Oh, no. Guy's getting chased, but okay. He's going to now be in, in kind of now a he's gonna, Now he's going to spawn in Narnia. He's so gonna, now, he's it's, gonna, now it's he's a 3 spawn 3 situation. Out, and it, he gets spawn killed. But basically what happens oh. is they push out the back so far that Kleenex gets one hill, one kill, and now Toronto's all of front control. Yeah. And then they and then yeah. they, they're so slow to kill Kleenex here dude, in Toby does a great job of he staying finesses, alive, dude. and they're just like wow. they're just not sure. Number oh six kind of makes the right play, does get a kill. Yeah, elbow. Having team needed him. Yeah. <gasps> Yeah, no. he team needed somebody, yeah. and, and and again, Kleenex he gets the kill off rotation, and oh, what does that do? It God. opens up the gaps, guys. It opens up the gaps. Oh, Kleenex no. gets a kill. It to, uh, Florida, they're forced to pick up other lanes. He makes a good play. Um, but but uh, that honestly, point. that was all Kleenex. It was all Kleenex just pushing out early, picking up one, spawning out skies, opening that those gaps on the map. It just allows Florida to be able to make plays and yeah. But and do you, do, what they Asa, do, do you like the setup that Florida had where they push out like? They push out. Uh, let's watch back. Hold on. Like they, they push out like 
bank this all way. Like they, they literally okay. just take the so whole back. So rule of number one, tight. like if Caesar is playing from white like this, like you better be goddamn. You got you got a, a flash and a semtex. Make sure you you're, you're flashing your your push. So you got your so you're not getting chased. Cause right here, like dude, the second he dies here, he knows. Ah, oh, guys, I fucked up. Like hold but, on. But but Asim, in this situation, now that Caesar's out, shouldn't they play tight in the back instead? Number seven goes to push out bank. Yeah. And they have this really spaced out setup where there's yeah, a lot of guys. By himself they and bank. They I have don't know no info. That. There's no watching elbow at this point. And and number five. Two like, okay. Back. Also, the other thing is yeah. like number f if number seven is pushing in bank. Number five should not be worried about his back. He should be focused on the middle steps. Yeah. So, like, realistically speaking, if number seven is making that solo play, like, he can do it. But number five sitting on top of the balcony, he just needs to look at that mid-cut 100%. He can't let Toby get out. Like, even if you don't think that the guy is there, like, you just got to hold it for the mm -hmm. risk of, of Toby doing what he did, literally. Yeah. I mean, just a good play by, by Toby. Good play by Toronto. They're able to clutch up. But then we push it to a map number five. And this is where I'm thinking Toronto's going to do the impossible. Well, not the impossible. You know, I'm fucking around. I'm exaggerating. But I thought they were going to reverse sweep. I thought they were going to do it. We go into a Miami S&D and Toronto, they come out swinging. I'm pretty sure they go up 2 or 3-0. No, Ben, they go up 3-0. Um, they're looking really I'll, good. I'll be honest. I was picking up my food at this point. I told you to watch this, so yeah, I'm yeah. watching these rounds back for the first yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, you could fast forward it. The first couple rounds, I mean, Toronto. No, this, this first this first round was wild. This is a 2v4. Yeah, yeah, it was wild. Big clutches from Toronto, but I'm saying they went up early. Toronto went up really early yeah, right yeah. off the rip. Um, I, want, I wanted to watch this clutch, though, because I didn't Cammy kills sure himself with it. a nade. Uh, Skies is able to take one down. Kleenex with a big kill. Um, it was just good trades back and forth from uh, from Toronto. They ended up they probably could have cleaned out the round a little bit better if Cammy didn't teammate himself. I think that's all really what it came down to. But um, for the most part, uh, Toronto they were able to pick up some trades, um, work this site. Uh, good individual plays here, as uh, as you'll see, Ben. Uh, they get the B bomb down. We know how how great this setup is. It's so hard to break the setup. Is. Um, to, uh, Kleenex, he's all the way on the boat. It's very rare you see somebody on the boat like this. It's a good. That's a good head. It's a good boat. head glitch. It's a good head glitch. He throws a trophy down on him. Um, Kleenex. He's a, he's he goes down. Havoc's able to take him out. It's like left in a one v two situation with fifteen seconds left on the clock. And if somebody from Florida, somebody from Florida needs to get near that bomb, and they know it. They somebody needs to run. Somebody starts going towards the bomb. All Insight needs to do is get him off the site. It was very weird. Did they not check down low? Did they not check the most obvious spot in the on the map? I think they just got. I think they just got worried about the time. I think they, point. but they didn't even look at it. Like they didn't even like. You they, know I mean, what I'm they saying? are. They are looking at it, but they just. They just decided. No, but to I'm. But I'm saying them. they didn't even check it. They, they didn't, didn't even check it. it. They weird. didn't clear it. They didn't clear the most important. And look, they're not even looking there. Look, they're not even looking. They're looking in the other direction. So I don't know if they just thought that he was some somewhere else or what. But if somebody runs to the bomb on Florida and somebody goes and checks the most important spot on the map, they might have been able to close out that first round. But it doesn't matter. Toronto, they go up one zero. Um, they go up 3-0, I, I believe, Ben. If you if you fast forward, they end up closing out some rounds. They get the trades on defense. They come out. They win another offense. But Florida, the, mentally, they're able to reset and bring this one back, and and they're able to tie it up at three. I don't know what Florida did. I feel like their mid round, their mid game adjustments are really good. I feel like they just really adapted to what Toronto was doing, and that's what always makes a good S and D team. And when I look at this Florida team, I think S and D. I do. I feel like they're going to be a really tough team to beat in SD. You have Havoc, who's an SD yeah. guy. He makes a lot of plays. You have Awakening, who's one of the best SD players in the game. You have Neptune, who's a playmaker. And then you have Skies, who, you know, he's a fucking rock. That guy's solid. They have a really, really good search and destroy team. I think that's what's going to push these guys over the edge. I think that's where, where these guys are really going to shine. Right here, you have Bantz. He's able to sneak onto this bomb site. He's going to try and get that defuse. He's going to go down. Trades are going back and forth. That was a good. Um, that was a good uh, save by Florida there. Great save. Really good heads up play by Bantz. To great your point save. about Florida and S and D, like they're you know, a good they, S and T. They, they were a good team, S and D team, but they lost a lot of S and D team lessons earlier this year. We're we're awakening with double digits. It is weird. And they were just straight get chalked. Uh, look like against top teams, they're going to have to clutch up this game mode, especially in game fives. You know how important having that S and D backbone is. It wins chips, and it was good on them that in a series where they. Could have argued they tossed away a couple of maps. They were able to stop the reverse sweep and get a huge win. Mm -hmm. What was their S and D record? What's their S and D record this year, Ben? Do you have it? Uh, fourteen and thirteen. Okay, so they're that about even. The and and I think uh, listen, I'm just saying with a team like this, with a roster like this, they're they've been a little bit disappointing in, in S and D. Maybe a little bit underwhelming. Really disappointing in every game mode, but yeah, in every game mode, yeah. But I'm especially S and D, just because when I see this roster, I think S and D. So I'm like, if these guys can really just pick up the pace in that game mode, because listen, man, S and D wins championships. We say it time and time again. 
You pay, they pick up the pace in this game mode a little bit. As long as they're stealing a respawn here or there, which they can easily do with the talent that they have, and close out these SNEs, this team's going to be a tough team to beat. Um, I think the main thing for them is just to find that consistency. But right here, they end up switching to the site. They end up going to the A-bomb site. Um, Bant, he's left on it by himself on this on this bow, and he ends up getting caught out a little bit. I don't know if he went a little bit rogue, maybe overpeaked a little bit. I would have liked to see him just shimmy check the bomb and just stay down, but... Maybe he got a little bit nervous that I he mean, was laying really down. It's a pinch from Havoc. I think it kind of benefited Havoc, the timing that he got there. I don't think Ban Banton expected someone to pinch that side so late, especially when they had to get to the fuse. It was a good play by Havoc to hit that late because he probably he probably knew that he was on the boat. Let's be honest. Everybody plays the fucking boat. Yeah, the boat, the boat spot's good. Yeah. Whenever, it's the same thing on both maps, man, it, or, or both sites. The B site, you plant the bomb, you go on the, the God Heady. The A site, you plant the bomb, you go on the boat. And you go party, party on the boat in Miami, just like you would if you were in life. Party on the boat in Miami. I like that, Ben. Yeah, uh, you're so, welcome. So Havoc, he ends up taking the long route. He takes his time. Just a good heads-up play out of him. They just predicted where he was. Bans ends up getting caught. Uh, Florida, they start bringing it back. They go down three. Wait, how, does have, Havoc, how does Havoc get through? And, He's and, right and again, the middle look, of the map. He goes right through middle. And that's what I'm saying. The playmaking ability from Havoc, I like the way he plays. I like the way that I, I like that he's not scared to make plays. He, he catches Bantz again with his pants down. Bantz is probably like, what the fuck? The minute Havoc makes that play, it opens up the whole map. Everybody on, on Toronto starts freaking out. They start pushing stuff out. Florida get the kills. They tie it up at three. They win three straight. They go back to a defensive round, and they end up taking this one as well. This one, and again, Toronto, right? They get they go up 3-0. Florida come back and tied up at 3. Toronto starts slowing it down. They wait till 12 seconds to make their fucking move. Um, and it was just a good job by Florida just uh, just really just pushing the pace on this map. They're setting the pace, Ben. Florida yeah. just switched the, switched the momentum. They switched the pace. Um, they forced Toronto to slow it down, and they just fall right into Florida's traps. And Florida does a good job taking the lead here. They go up 4-3. Um, and honestly, it's just the composure that really impressed me out of the Mutineers today. Uh, great composure. Here's my flag. Florida is actually the, the team I'm most excited to watch on land because they've got potentially some momentum coming in, depending on how they play the rest of the stage. And they have some players that haven't played a Call of Duty main stage land before. Think about it. Mm -hmm. That's You've true. You've got Havoc, Havoc guys have a lot of experience. Havoc is good. Of, they play a lot of lands, but Awakening, we've never seen compete. On a Call of Duty land. He played in the open bracket, right? Yeah, he played in the open bracket, didn't play well. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Neptune, same thing. So I'm curious to see, you know, they're going to benefit from probably a little bit of a closed environment uh, that we're going to get for Major 4. But, um, you know, this was a big win for Florida, and they got to continue getting confidence as a team uh, and try, and like we, we said all year long, we're waiting for this Florida team to crack the top four, top six. We know they have the potential, maybe. And I've said this about seven different times this year, I think. Maybe this is the stage where they figured that out. Mm-hmm. No, 100%. Florida, they end up crawling back in. Again, you see Florida taking those routes. They're, they're, they're hitting late routes. They're hitting routes that just teams don't expect. They're doing, yeah. they're doing unpredictable stuff. Um, and that just comes down to their confidence and their playmaking ability. So it's just really exciting to watch them play. They won five straight, Ben. They go down 3-0. Yeah, they win five straight. Um, and to me, that's just the, them adapting. They're, they're seeing how Toronto plays the map. They're starting to get a hang of, of kind of what they're doing. And instead of doing the same thing, they change it up. And they adapt to what Toronto's doing. And they end up bringing this one back. So Florida end up closing out this map. And uh, I just want to give props to them because they let's, look a lot better Let's talk today. Uh, next step. So they both play on Sunday. Florida plays London. That's an interesting series because we have a new London team for mm -hmm. like the 89th time. Yep. Uh, and <laughs> Toronto... Oh, yeah, I'm exaggerating, but you get my point. <laughs> and then Toronto, it doesn't get any easier because they're going to play a Dallas team that's got a new player in Reese Vivid. Maybe going to have a little bit of honeymoon. Toronto, that's a must-win game. You can't go down 0-2 in this group. It's going to put them in a tough spot. Yep. Um, so excited to see that one. That's going to be the second-last match on Sunday. Look at Skies. What the fuck is he doing? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what did the, 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 the crab walk the flex. They waited. Sky's made did some some weird celebration. I don't know what's going he's on. He's investing over in there. his game. Maybe he's investing uh, invest in his dance. But a, a big more. fan of Caesar Skies over here. So yeah. uh, I don't know what he's doing. But six straight rounds from the Florida yeah, Mutineers. Uh, some 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 ice out of the Mutineers. We've been waiting on that one for a while. Love to see that. Love to see that. We also got some more games coming up tomorrow, Ben. If you want to pull those up, yeah, but real quick, uh, guys. I don't know if you guys have been checking out this event that's been being run by Astro, but um, it's called the Astro Power Players. 
Um, basically, if you're if you're an amateur player and you want to get your name out there a little bit, I highly recommend signing up. Just go to bit dot ly slash power player season two and you guys could sign up i actually casted it last time i don't know if you guys checked me out on the casting desk but i was casting some of the uh, some of the players and some of the matches and man some of these matches went all the way down to the wire man so make sure to check out those matches make sure to sign up if you want to get your name out there and i'll probably be on the desk again watching some of these games and, and casting them so uh make sure to go sign up but Ben is, is Astro sponsoring the show now? Like, what's the deal here? No, it's it's literally New York is running the the events. It's not an ad, guys. Okay, okay. New, New, I'm literally okay, on the so desk, so. guys. I've done this okay. before. I was on the de I was on the desk. Put command power players in the chat. I'm not getting paid to say that. I've, I literally I'm gonna be on the desk probably with them, just uh, watching some of the matches. Um, and last time, Ben, we had one of the craziest hard points in that. In yeah, that I event saw that club. That was it went wild. all the way down to the wire, bro. The teams were going back and forth. It was pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, man, you guys could spam ad or you know whatever you want to do. Uh, but I'm just uh, throwing it out there because I I, th I feel like it's a good way to get your name out there. I'm gonna be on the desk, I'm gonna be watching. Um, and last time I had a, f a few thousand viewers and we were having a good time, and uh, I was definitely peeping some of the plays being made. So if you guys want to try and get your name out there, uh, put command power players in the chat. There should be a link. And you guys can sign up if you guys have a team. It's a cool tournament, man. And I'm gonna be uh, keeping my eyes on, on some of the players there. I think. Listen, man. I found Asim. Doing a fucking subscriber tournament, oh, and, sure. and, 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 and and Crowder's con Crowder was running a subscriber tournament in his Twitch stream. That's how I found Asim. I found him playing a subscriber tournament, guys. So if you guys want to check it out and sign up, go do it because we found Asim in a subscriber tournament. So if you guys want to go sign up, Astro Power Players tournament, go sign up, man. Put Command Power Players in the chat. Uh, but remember, bit.ly/slash Power Players Season Two. And you guys can go sign up. But Ben, tomorrow yeah. we got London Royal Ravens going up against Dallas Empire. Okay. I'm so excited to see these guys play because Dallas got the new guy in town, Vivid Reese. This guy finally gets a shot. He gets put on the bench with Los Angeles Gorillas. A lot of people are like, what the fuck? You're going to take the best player? You're going to throw him on a bench? LA Gorillas, they've shown a little bit of improvement, but, you know, not really. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Reese, he's able to find himself over with the Dallas Empire guys as they got rid of Hook. They tried out Fellow for a little bit, but I think Vivid's going to be a good fit for this team. So I'm really ex excited to see how they how they come out and play. And then you got London, who, like you said, they changed, uh, what, 89 times, I think you said, Ben? Yeah, maybe uh, not 89 times. Probably, like, what, the fifth change? Uh-huh. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see how these guys come out to play. You have Afro over there, right, Ben? Afro, he's going to come out to play. Yeah. A lot of people. You got have Alex been... now on the run. Yeah, the, Alex. The run uh, again. Listen, a lot of people have been talking about this Afro kid. A lot. So I'm excited to see what this fucking guy could do because that's all I hear. When I, when I hear London, I hear Afro. Afro, Afro, Afro. I saw him on Twitter. I followed him. The kid does have a fucking Afro, which I thought was pretty cool. And then we go into uh, the next match, Optic Chicago, going up against the new Minnesota Rocker. Recently, they just got rid of Accuracy, um, and they picked up Major Maniac again, right? Major Maniac was on the roster. They end up uh, dropping him for Standy, but now they put Accuracy to the bench, and they bring Major Maniac back into the starting roster. So maybe they're just trying to get a little bit more slang power, maybe trying yeah. to work some things out. They haven't been getting the results they've been wanting, so... We're going to see a new Minnesota, and they're going to be going up against uh, a very dangerous Optic Chicago that just came off a top four placing. So I'm really excited to see how these plays at, play out. But, Ben, I'm curious. What are your predictions going into tomorrow? Uh, so Series 1's a weird one because you have two teams making changes, so tape's not going to be helpful, like, almost at all for these teams. You have to rely on scrims. They scrimmed each other. Uh, I got Dallas taking it 3-2. I, I just think on experience alone, I got to favor Dallas in this one. Mm -hmm. uh, but I could also see Dallas maybe taking a 3 3 one I just think a 3-2 is uh, a fair That Shotzi guy is hitting MVP form again, Ben. Yeah. Oh, my help. God. He needs help from his teammates. And I think he's going to help them a lot. He does. But, man, I've been watching Shotzi stream eights and even play pubs this and stuff. Guy's that different, guy. Oh, he's different. He's different, yeah. guys. The way he moves around the map, uh, just his knowledge and the way he plays COD is just very different to, to every other uh, yeah. player. It just seems like that he, he looks at the game a little bit differently. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm really excited to watch these guys play tomorrow and see what they can do. But I'm going to go with a with uh, Dallas 3-2 as well. I think it's going to be very back and forth. Um, actually, no, Ben, you went Dallas 3-2? Yeah. All right, then I'll go London 3-2. I think this All new right. Afro kid, I think Alex is going to want to show out. I think this Afro kid's going to want to make a name for himself. I think shawnee has been playing pretty well. Yeah, Paul X making noise. Um, so I think, you know, I don't want to underrate London at all because I feel like these guys are actually a really good team. 
So I'm excited to see them play. I would have liked to see Zed still be in the roster because I'm a big fan of Zed and the way he's been playing. He's also been killing it in challengers. But I'll go 3-2 London. I'll go against you, Ben, just so we make things okay. interesting. Fair enough. And I actually do think London could win this one. Um, and then we go to the next one. I think Chicago going up against the Minnesota Rocker. I think Minnesota is going to look better. But I don't think they're going to be out to Chicago tomorrow. I, uh, I've i been watching Optic scrim a little bit. They scrimmed yesterday. Um, they didn't stream scrims, but they were playing yeah. against John and stuff. I was watching them scrim, and I was watching Sib stream and stuff, and they were absolutely waxing those guys, and they look like they're hitting form, and I like that they're just really putting in the time off stream yeah. um, and really just focusing on themselves and making sure that they're cleaning up their plays and their, their mistakes. So I'm going with Optic Chicago 3-1 here. I think they're going to take them down tomorrow. I think they're going to do what they do. Um, but what do you think, Ben? This is a weird one. I have optic, but I'm going to say three, two as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to show some respect to Minnesota. I will not be shocked if Minnesota win this in a game five, because I think they should become a better S and D team with Mike, AKA major maniac in the roster. I do think though, we got to give optic the edge in this series based on the momentum they had from last week, but they got to carry that momentum to this week. They don't have an easy set of games. They play Minnesota and they play phase. And if they don't show up this week, they might be 0 and 2, which you can't have happen. So mm -hmm. I expect Optic to be focused going into the series to know that they have a, t a tougher task with this group. Well, I mean, they had a tough group last group as well. So let's not say that. But I think they're going to be focused because, unlike last stage where they had two easy games to start, they've got two difficult games. I think Optic's going to clutch up and win this one. Yep. I think, regardless, we have two. I think these two matches are so exciting tomorrow to see a new yeah. London, a new Dallas go at it, a new Minnesota going up against Optic. It's going to be. A lot of new teams tomorrow. It's good. Just, it's just tomorrow. It's, it's just such an exciting four, day. Legitimately, four new teams. Such an exciting day tomorrow, guys. I'm yeah. super excited to watch these two matches. I think today was a little bit underwhelming in terms of like the matches being played. So oh, the second match was good. What are you talking about? The second match, but the first the match. Fir was, the I, first match was like. What, the first match could have been a 3 0 Sneeze Fest. We got an extra map in that set. Yeah, you're right. We, we got yeah. an extra map in the set. The second match got a lot more interesting um yeah. I, it started off 2-0 florida i thought it was gonna go like 3-0 3-1 but but toronto definitely made it interesting they, they brought it back um not not underwhelming i i guess what's the word to say i'm just thinking i'm just looking at these two matches tomorrow and i think tomorrow is gonna be so exciting just because we got a lot of new talent that's coming up yeah. and uh i'm just really excited to watch some see some new faces and, and see what they can do so i think we're gonna have a lot to talk about tomorrow but guys Please, if you have any questions in the chat before we end the show, drop them and we'll do the best we can to answer the best questions that we see. We'll pick a couple out of the chat. And again, as always, guys, it's always a pleasure doing this show, man. Um, regardless of whether there's one match, two match, three matches, uh, we love coming on and, and talking Call of Duty. Um, and we also want to start making some other shows when there's some downtime, when there's off weeks in COD, maybe in the off season, we definitely want to start looking, getting some guests on the show and, and maybe, um, you know, talking to some people about other stuff that goes on behind the scenes. Maybe uh, Adam Apicella would love to come on. I know Ben has talked about getting Adam on. Yeah, we, we may not engine. get him during this season. I, I might want to save the him. The off maybe season. We'll, maybe we'll get him for a segment. So Tom and I have been talking, and you guys let us know what you think about this. Like In the off season, we'll do some episodes, breaking all the roster news. I'm sure there's going to be some drama. Excuse me, as there is, excuse my burp there. As there always is in the, the off season. What the fuck is wrong with you, you yeah, nasty know, bastard? That was, that was disgusting. But that aside, and my burp aside, I also, we also want to do some like interview episodes. So we want to get a guest on and kind of ask them a lot of questions, do it for like an hour or so, and then get your guys' questions. Mm -hmm. I think Adam would be a good one and walk through kind of. A lot of people, kind of, man. I would love to get yeah, Hector on, uh, Hastro, yeah, all like, these guys. Always, Tom, I don't know about you, but I get a lot of messages from people like, how do you start any sports? How do you get any sports? Want to get people on that have interesting stories because not everybody has the same story and how they got here. A lot of uh, there really is no conventional way to get into this industry, and would love to share some of those stories with you guys, uh, and you know get those interesting folks on and get their take in uh, how they got here, what's going on, or where they think esports is going in the future. Yeah, we see a tweet coming in. We have Decimate quote tweeting the stats from uh, Challengers, the elite yeah. uh, leaderboards. He's obviously on top with a one point seven four. Uh, he's tweeting out a gift saying that he's different. And you got Dylan Envoy from Optic Chicago coming out and responding, saying, you got the low league on lock for show. Um, I thought that was a, a quality tweet. That's a good tweet. Uh, out of coming out of Envoy. I thought that was a one boy for sure. I thought that's a, I think that's a W for him. Um, 
I just think it's hilarious that he's just because I'm what he finds himself in the pro league. He ends up chalking it after fucking what a week you, you or two. Mean, you mean you mean, you mean uh, or decimate uh, decimate, decimate yeah. my bad decimate yeah, comes into a, the pro a, league. A he ends up chalking it after a week or two. Yeah, deserve yeah. rose, deserve rose. I thought that was really funny. Um, so I just wanted to pull that up. But guys, any questions in the chat other than how big is Ben's dick? Because I saw that question three times. Yeah, you guys know. got any other questions? People, people are so curious. They don't call him Ben uh, Ten for a reason. Should, should, should champs play in the MVP race or just regular season like other sports leagues? My guess is they'll probably just be the regular season because they probably got to like prepare all that stuff for when they give out that award. Um, I think traditionally, like in most pro sports, you have like an MVP of the playoffs or the finals and you have the MVP of the regular season. So I think that's how they should do it. What, what was the question? What, what was so it? I'm asking like the, the champ, like champs should factor into the MVP. Yeah. I think you should have two different MVPs. You, you have someone so? who played well, you should recognize someone. They play well the entire regular season because uh -huh. it's more than just one weekend. Yeah. And then you have someone who played well on Champs Weekend. So like a final MVP in a, in a league MVP. <laughs> yeah, 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 I like yeah. that. I like that. That's how they should do yeah. it. I personally think that's how they should do it. Should Easter replace Sib for Fellow? Now, listen, this Easter team has been having a lot of problems. Yeah, can, we talk, can we talk about what the fuck's going on over here? Yeah, what's going on down in Easter? I don't understand what's going on in their camp. I feel like it's just falling apart. Yeah, could I, could I tee off on this one for a minute? All right, go ahead, Ben. I have a lot of thoughts. So All this right. Easter team, right? Uh, they put together a really good roster with Jordan John, who obviously have been in the league for a very long time. Obviously, John was, was kind of out of commission for a minute. You know, we haven't seen Jordan in a while. They had Sib, who's obviously been a really talented AM player for a while. And same with Tom Gravity. Both Sib and Tom have won a lot. And they did really well. They won the Open for the last major, and they won uh, the last stage of the Elite. And yeah. I don't know what happened recently. It, it, oh, they've, they've scrimmed proteins a couple of times. And I love Sib. He's got great talent. But this guy really needs to work on his mindset. Like, he was complaining in those scrims, Tom, about, like, mm -hmm. why do we book this scrim? And complaining about the players. First off, like, this is the best practice you're going to get. These are the best teams in the game. They're pro teams. They have discipline. You should learn from every map you play against them and not expect that you're going to win every map. Mm -hmm. And I think that attitude is starting to leach into their team because I've watched them play in the elite. And it just seems like their chemistry is completely off. So I don't know what's going on. Um, but, you know, from talking to people in and around the team, it seems like just just some attitudes and people really aren't kind of committed to the work ethic at the listen, moment required to, to get at this level. Listen, and I see a lot of people saying stupid shit in the chat. Somebody's saying, oh, I thought Sib has changed. And that's obviously sarcasm because I said that. I, I said that Sib has changed yeah, been uh, a, yeah, a couple months ago. And I've talked to people that have played with the kid saying that they haven't had any problems and that he's an amazing teammate and a good player and he does a lot for a team. Now, recently, I guess he's going back to his old ways. Guys, I have said time and time again about Sib, and for some reason, people like to say that all I do is just back him up on the show and just say good things about him, which is not true. The one thing that I always say about Sib is his attitude problem, and I say it to him directly on the show every time he comes on is that you got to make sure that you fix your attitude problem or it's going to be an issue and nobody's going to pick you up. And I have had one-on-one -on -one calls with him off stream um, about his attitude problem. And I'm going to be honest, I didn't see any problems until recently. And when I talked to people that he was playing with, people loved playing with him. They had nothing bad to say. They just said he's a very talented player and he's good to play with. Um, so I don't know now that the team's falling apart, maybe he's starting to act up again. And that's a serious problem. If he's acting up again and his attitude is coming out again, and it's showing on stream. That's just a bad look. It's a bad I, look. I don't, I don't get it because they were, they didn't really like, you know, NYSL Academy broke up. Probably like the next best team was like the UT crew team. And then Major Maniac got caught up. So that team shuffled. Like, East was in a position to really kind of run uh, some, some real wins back to back in the scene. And I don't know what is it with amateur teams. Like, they get to the top and then that's just not good enough for them. Zumo, Zumo, who's defending them? I don't understand them? it. So, Zumo, in the chat, stop defending him. Who's defending neither, him? Neither of us are defending him. Neither of us are defending him, brother. Yeah. Neither of us. Yeah. I, I don't know how many times I got to say it. The kid's got to fix his fucking attitude. I've said it months ago. I said it months ago. I said that he started changing because based off what I was hearing and watching, he seems good. He calls yeah, that. He, it was, he was trying to get better. There was a time happened. period where I was talking to him one-on-one, yeah. -on -one, day by day, and I was keeping close attention to him, and he was doing his fucking thing. He was playing well. His attitude was completely fine, and he was changing his ways. Now, maybe because the team's falling apart, maybe he's losing his head a little bit. Maybe he's buckering with people on the team, and it's unacceptable. And there's definitely issues with a lot of people on that team. A lot of people on that team have issues. I think the whole team in general needs to work on their culture. Um, I saw a lot of people saying, for somebody who talks a lot about culture, Zuma sure backs up Sib a lot. I don't know how many times I got to complain about this guy's attitude. I'm not, I'm, 
I say it time and time again. Sib is an amazing player, talented as fuck. He needs to clean up his attitude. The last few months, I thought he's been picking up his attitude. I've been watching. He seems completely fine. I talk to people on his team. They all say good things about him. Um, but now, uh, apparently, uh, things are hitting the fucking fan again. I saw the stream. He was losing his mind a little bit. I'm probably going to reach out to him again and talk to him. But at this point... Yeah, figure it out, Tom. They're 0-4 I mean, I mean, this I mean, at this, at this point, I can't help the fucking guy. I can't. If he's not going to fucking fix his attitude, then nobody can. I've talked to this guy a million times when I won. Yes, he's a good friend of mine outside of the game. But in the game, if he can't change his attitude, then I don't know what you guys want me to say. Well, let's take it a step further. What the CDL League has proven over the last two years is no matter how talented you are, if you are not a plus teammate, teams are going to figure it out. You will get dropped from your current team, and then you will have trouble getting on another team. And for Sib, he's got immense talent. We've seen it the last two years. But if he doesn't improve his attitude, his work ethic, other CDL teams are going to take notice. Right now, he's currently a, a sub for Atlanta phase. And to be honest, they've done him a big favor considering the situation he got himself in last year. What he said about Optic, FaZe gave him a second chance. He's going to end up in a situation where he's going to be stuck in the amateur scene for quite a few more years because no CDL team is going to want to take a chance on him. So. It's, it's not even, yeah, it's just the players that are playing under those CDL teams. Nobody's going to want to play with a hothead. No, it's just it's just hard. It's just hard yeah. to get on board with somebody like that. And I've talked about it. I went on a whole fucking rant talking about having a good team culture. And if you can't, if you can't put yourself into the right mindset to get along with other people and be a good teammate, it's not going to yeah. work. And you're not going to be a good professional player. It's just going to fall apart. So, listen. I really hope people are listening because whenever I say stuff like this, it seems like it goes through one ear and out the other. But, guys, he needs to pick up the fucking attitude problems. He has to. He has to. And and I hope he's watching. And if he has a problem, he can call me. But watching stuff back, listen, he needs to change. He needs to change his ways. Do I think he yep. can do it? Yes. At the end of the day, uh, he just needs to figure out a way to just keep himself in check. Do I think he's an amazing, talented player? Of course. Sib is talented as fuck. Anybody who watches him play can say that. Anybody who watches him play can say that he's super talented. He's a really good player. But when you get to the highest level, it's not just about talent anymore. There's a lot of intangible. About teamwork. You, got, you, want, you need to want it more than everybody else. You need to be a plus teammate. Yeah, there's a look lot at of the Look at the best teams in the game the last two years. And you want to understand, if you study them, why those teams are so good. It's because it's not just about Gunny. They bring all the else to the game, and that's why they get consistent results. Mm -hmm. Ed Sib is a very good friend of mine, so it is hard to say bad things about him. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm saying them because I want to see him do well. And the only time, the only way he's going to do well is if he changes some of his ways. Um, so I wish him the best of luck, and I hope moving forward he, he really focuses on that. And then the rest of that Easter team needs to focus the fuck up too. Because Sib, yes, he's a problem, but the rest of them have problems as well. I think yeah. I think there's serious culture issues going on over there with, with Team Easter. Um, and then you got uh, Optic coming out. We're going to take a look at their tweet real quick. I see a lot of people want yeah, to talk about this. Last thing, talk about this coach tweet. Yeah, uh, we'll talk time. about this coach tweet and then we'll, we'll end it there. But let's take a look. Um, the, the caption of the tweet is, should coaches be back behind players in COD? Your thoughts? Let's see what these guys had to say. I feel like the next step in COD for coaching, well, in Halo they do it. So I'm wondering why, how come in Call of Duty the coaches don't stand behind them? I've been saying this. For, as I soon it, as I didn't get that as either. As soon as coaches got banned in COD from standing by like players, like we let Pomage coach get a free championship. And the shots ran and then Optic Gaming are going to be your ESWC 2016 champions with a 3 0 sweep for the Spice in the last game. Third. That was the last stopped. time there was coaching. Oh, maybe maybe it really does. Coach. Coach. I think coaching behind players is like the coolest. Damn. Like they should do it in Rocket League, like they in should do it here. What are your thoughts, Ben? So here's my thought process. And I you can pull up the Merck tweet because my thought process is it the, the answer is somewhere in the middle. Should coaches be allowed to talk to players at any point during a match? Absolutely no. I think they should not be a crutch on communication. Should they be allowed to talk to the team between rounds in S D and rounds in control? I believe so. Uh, I have been a big advocate for at points, I think, on this show about having one time out in S D. I think you would see a lot more parity if coaches could help guide teams that don't have that mid-game adjustment factor. I think mm -hmm. it would be interesting. It takes away so that I, skill. So I, I think the answer is somewhere in the middle. I don't think it's a black and white thing. I mean, I agree with Joe. I agree, I agree with Merck. I just feel like you take away just some of the talent that some of these guys have at the highest level where they're able to be aware 
communicate when they're when they're shooting and just do it all at once and be able to think and direct their teammates. I mean, that's part of being a good Call of yeah, Duty player. Do you, do you know what uh, Mr. X used to do on the COL team? Is if one of their players got EMP, he would start calling out for them. Like if it, it, it like I don't think they should be able to call at any time because they're just gonna like pick up a lot of like basic stuff that other teammates or other team the teammates are just gonna focus in on just getting their gunning up. I don't think that that would screw up all the comms, and I don't think it should work that way. I think it should, uh-huh. should rely on the small talk between the players. But yeah. I would like to see more closer control maps, and I think you'd do that if a coach could come in and kind of like work on adjustments with the team in between rounds. I think it's doable. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but you know I think it would take some tweaks and. All the teams have to buy in. But well, I think the, it's an interesting topic. Well, for the people listening on audio, Merck came out and said no. It became a cop out for players who couldn't shoot and talk at the same time, so they would call out for them, or a coach just yelled. If they want to be behind them and talk to them during game pauses, I'm all for it. But when the action is flowing, only player comms, in my opinion. He hit it spot on. I mean, he said everything. He's. Yeah. I, I think Merck said it the best. Um, I agree with him. Just put a little check mark next to that for me. Um, and I think, uh, you know, the last time we saw coaches and Cod, all they did was scream at the top of their lungs. You saw Hilton going fucking crazy. You saw Mr. Oh, X man, going crazy. You had people talking shit. I thought it was stupid. Um, I think for the most part, I like that in between matches, coaches can come on stage and say what they have to say, getting ready for the next map. Um, but for the most part, I don't want no coaches coming in the middle of games. Um, I just think that'll be ridiculous. I think that's yep, ridiculous. Agreed. Um, but at the end of the day, let's end it right there, Ben. I think we had an amazing show today. I think tomorrow sure, we're going to yeah. have an amazing show. I'm really, Agreed. really excited to watch these matches tomorrow, guys. I think we're going to have a lot to talk about, so make sure to stay tuned. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Make sure to check out uh, anchor.fm slash the flank um, to see when or to hear all the different audio sites that we're on. Uh, make sure to go follow the flank on Twitter at the flank. Um, we're close to 10,000 subscri- uh, 10, subscribers, 10,000 followers on the Twitter account. Um, so make sure to go check out the uh, the Flank Twitter account. And uh, Gersh has been doing a great job. There's a lot of great content on there. So if you guys haven't seen it, go check it out. Uh, make sure to go follow Ben at Ben Janaseem. Go follow me at Zuma with two A's. And uh, guys, another great show. I appreciate you all coming in. We're going to continue to stream and play some games. But we'll catch you guys tomorrow in another episode of The Flank. Have a good day, guys. Have a good fucking day. Have a good day.